Hi there, everyone. Welcome to another special edition of Cardwell's Cauldrons here at Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And of course, this is the new set magic review. <laughs> hey! Yay! Now, it might seem like we're being a little late because there was like, I heard that they're going to push the set back so I didn't worry about it. And then I realized it was coming on Arena and I was like, oh, we need to worry about it. Yeah. So yeah, we need to go ahead and do it out and play it and hopefully give you our fun and descriptive words for all these cards for sure. Our thoughts and everything about each card and what the set's going to do. Okay. Exactly. So how we do is we, of course, go through the cards and we say either limited, standard, or any other format for sure. Or, or not playable. Or worthless. There are some. For us brewers, it's not that many, but there are some for sure. So, you know, if we say it's worthless, it actually means something. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But, of course, before we get into it, we're going to remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us, and we love you very much for it, and the link will be down below. Now, of course, this is a very loose-fitting thing. Uh, we will have it color-coded, so if you need to go white, or time-stamped, there we go. So if you just want blue, then down below there'll be a time-stamp for you to do that. And right now we're actually going to just start with a colorless little set of creatures, which is, it hasn't been, it hasn't happened in a while, but we're going to go ahead yeah, and do it's that. It's like the Void Dudes from like, you know, like the Eldrazi are the same idea. It's those. Exactly. So let's get into it. Ikoria. It's an adaptive shimmer. Rarer. It's a five drop, zero, zero insect, but it has flash and it enters the battlefield with a three plus one plus one counter. So I don't, I don't like this card. It's not I, that good. It's cool and limited. But it's even not that good. Yeah, it's not that good unless you do the flash deck because there is one that's an archetype. Even still not good for five mana. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. If it was four mana, I would go for it and limited. Yeah. That's it. Next up is the Farfinder. He is three for a 1 1 Vigilance Fox and it comes into play. You may search your deck for a li or search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it in your hand. Yep. Then shuffle your library. It's really good and limited since you can like color wedge real quick because there's tri lands now. So if you make a three color deck, you need this guy immediately. But this dude doesn't get those because it's a basic land. Yeah, card. but it at least gets your basic lands. I mean, yeah, it does, but yeah. it doesn't get a tri land. Sadly. No, no, yeah, sadly not. The next one is a mysterious egg. It's a one drop, zero two. Whenever this creature mutates, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Now that's good in the fact that it's a one drop and then you can immediately just start mutating and you don't know what it, that is well we'll get to a creature that will actually have the mutate thing so we're going to talk about it okay that is it for colorless we're gonna step into white yep first up is blade banish it is a white and three for an instant exile target creature with power four or greater so they always have to have one of these cards yep. it's just a staple card it's a very good card and limited it's not really playable for anywhere Anyone else yeah but it it's just really good. Exactly. And, limited. and the fact that Exiles too just doesn't destroy. Next one is Checkpoint Officer. It's a one and a white, one, two. Pay one and a white, tap, tar tap target creature. Simple as that. They always have one of these white cards for sure. Mm -hmm. Next is the Coordinated Charge, a white and four for an instant. Creatures you control get plus two, plus one until the end of turn. That card is awful, except it has Cycling two. Yep. Which for those that don't know, Cycling is discard this card, draw a card, and you pay the cost. Cycling is a really cool mechanic that's brought back. Yep. This card is still not really good. It's not. Um, it's good, okay. It's usable in limited if you have to, but otherwise well, it's not good. I would only use it for its cycling ability <clears throat> if you have the cycle white deck. Because all, all, white and red Boros deck, it's ridiculously yeah. powerful. But there's many cards that are out there that are like, you pay three and get a plus two, plus two. Like, it's terrible. Next is Cub Warden. It's a three and a white, three, five. It has a lifelink. And whenever this creature mutates, create two one, one white creature tokens with lifelink. Super good. Now here's where we get into the mutate. The mutate cost is either cheaper or less, or right now even the same, just different. It's two and two white. And basically what happens, you have to choose a non-human creature and you put this creature on top or below. And depending on how it goes, so the mutant into the creature top plus all the abilities underneath. So with that little egg, it's a zero two. You put this on top and it immediately becomes a three five. And then the abilities of the egg trigger as well. So it gets a one one counter. And this thing triggers cause it's still mutating and you get two one one cats. Exactly. And this is how you can make dudes have haste as well because it can swing immediately when you do it. And it 
it gets out of hand. This thing, mechanic is super fun to play in limited, and it's really yeah. It's a very well thought out mechanic. Uh, it's kind of weird because you can mutate onto a man land and it stay. Yes, which is really really awkward, but. Hey. And I do believe with the rules, the land still has the abilities of the creature while it's a land. So if it's an activated ability, you can activate it. Yeah, it's and pretty wild. It's... But mutate's a crazy mechanic. It's going to be fun to see what it can do. Oh, yeah, for sure. Next is the Day Squad Marshal. Oh, sorry. By the way, Cub Warden, totally good. Yeah, super mutates good. Mutate's in limited, mutate's in standard. It's awesome. Super good. Sorry. Day Squad Marshal is a white and three for a 3-3. Three, three, and it enters the battlefield. You create a 1-1 one, one white human token. And it's cool. It's okay. a really good limited card yeah. because it helps fill your board and gives you extra dudes. And regardless of how much it costs, anything in limited that makes a token is always good. Yes. It's just Agreed. it's just how it is. Especially since there is a black white uh, deck out there for sure. Divine Arrow. It's one in a white staple. It's an instant. Divine Arrow does four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Uh, limited goodness. Pick it up as f if you play white for sure. Yeah. That's it. Next up is the Dranith Healer. It is one white and one for a 2-2 human cleric. Whenever you cycle another card, you gain one life. And it cycles for one. It's a really good limited card. If you're playing cycling, it's really cool. It's kind of a build around if you go cycling, but I don't I don't think it's all that good, but yeah. it is there if you need it. It is a 2-2 for 2-2, just in case you need that. Uh, Dranith Magistrate. It's a one and a white, one three. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hand. I can see this being standard sideboard for sure and see how it goes. Yeah. Like, so for, I guess, Dread, I don't know actually. There's a lot of spells out there that you can cast from the graveyard. Or Storm, it wrecks Storm, yeah. I believe. So. I, I do see this card being in standard as a staple card, probably sideboard though, because yeah. it does stop a lot of the like weird graveyard cards or like the mutate dude that graveyard plays. Or companion guy yeah we'll get to him in a little bit oh yeah, but oh, yeah. and it stops companions too yeah it stops all the weird stuff like that uh the next card is fight as one it is one white instant choose one or both target human creature you control gets plus one plus one and indestructible target non-human gets plus one plus one and gains indestructible super I, good i feel like this is your like favorite card yeah yeah it's right like a hex proof card but it it helps two people out if I, yeah if you get it right it is really neat it's a good uh trick card in limited yeah. so definitely if you're running it if you get them use them it's i don't know if it's taking if you take it over a creature but it is really good in limited yeah it's definitely one of those that towards the end you grab it because it's, it's indestructible is great and plus one plus one is just ridiculous so it trades up in battle now this guy is a limited bomb a flourishing fox it's a one drop one one whenever you cycle another card put a one one counter on flourishing fox it also has cycling for one play this turn one by the turn three you can be demolishing your opponent quickly yeah, yeah dude can get out of hand yeah definitely draft Limited. if you build around cycle it's okay and standard yeah for sure next up garrison cat it is one for a one one when it dies you create a one one human soldier awesome and limited because cool. yeah. it's one one that replaces itself exactly and it's a cat so the best thing about all these small creatures if they're not human is that you can mutate on them so done yeah so Elysia Glider, two, it's a three drop, two, two, Nightmare Squirrel, and I guarantee you that actually comes up. Uh, so it enters the battlefield of your choice, flying counter or a first strike counter on it. Now, this might sound weird to you if you just get into this, but yes, abilities now have counters to them by themselves, which is extremely powerful and like it does a lot of work. In, in Paper Magic, it's going to be so like confusing for a while but on arena it, they make it pretty simple yeah it seems really good like it definitely is going to be a limited bomb yeah for sure maybe not bomb but a limited good card i mean i played in limited with a, a rare card that we'll get into and it was definitely a bomb yeah. for sure next up is the Huntmaster liger it is a white and three for a three four cat whenever this card creature mutates other creatures you control get plus x plus x where x is the number of times this card has mutated neat yeah pretty cute and it's mutate cost is a white and two so you can mutate it and do whatever you need to do yeah you can pay three for a three four that pumps the team yeah it's pretty good it's uh pretty good limited for sure oh yeah imposing vantasaur i was gonna say inventosaurus but then <laughs> it's a five and a white three six vigilance and a cycling one i would use it for cycling if you need to put it in your limited but i would not it's man 
Yeah. Next up is the Keen Sight Mentor. It is a white and two for a 1-4 human cleric with, I guess, a pet monkey. Yeah, I was like, is it is she riding it or is it... No, it's just it? taking a selfie on the camera. Well, because they're in the air. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Whenever your Keen Sight Mentor <laughs> enters the battlefield, put a Vigilance counter on target non-human you control. Yeah. Uh, pay one in white and tap, put a creature, put a one counter on each creature you control of Vigilance. She is a super good bomb in Limited because she can make your dudes really, really strong. If yeah. you just have a lot of Vigilance dudes, you're just like, cool, into turn, make a counter, make a counter, exactly. make a counter. Yeah, there's a cycle of these and they're all powerful. Uh, next one is a Lava Bring Venturer. It's a two and a white, three, three. Enters the battlefield, choose odd or even. Uh, has protection from each companion cost of the chosen value. And it has protection. So therefore, if your dude, enemies' dudes are all odd or even, then it just keeps swinging in. It's, it's super good. Yeah, protection is one of those abilities that's super strong. So they don't use it very often, but when they do, it's it's really good. Oh yeah, definitely a bomb and limited because yes. it can end the game because they can't block, and it's a really good build around card in standard. Yeah, white weenie might come back for sure. Yeah, next is light of hope. One white instant. Choose one. You gain four life. Destroy target enchantment. Put a one one counter on target creature. So this card is one drop. Give you options. Yeah, it's worth it. Like, yeah. Definitely good card in limited because it gives you so many options and it can be pretty useful in standard. I think it'd be more of a sideboard card in standard, yep. but it is really strong. Because destroy target enchantment for one is pretty good, better than disenchant, right? Mm -hmm. And then in limited, definitely, definitely snag one for because there's a lot of different uses. All right, this guy, Luminous Broodmoth, uh, two and two white. It's a three, four flying. Uh, whenever a creature you control without flying dies, return it to the battlefield under your control with the flying counter on it. This card is broken and super good. Yeah, this card is nuts. Yes. Good in every format. Yep. Because of what it does. I know that this dude in modern already is destroying the world. Yep. Because of Solemn Singularity. And for those that don't know what that card is, creatures can't have counters put on them. So you're like, cool, play that, play this dude. And then you play the red black titan that they discard a card or they take three yeah you're just like cool take three. Oh, let's do this a lot it comes back because it doesn't have a flying counter yeah. oh wait you can't get a flying counter again so just th and, and it auto dies since you didn't cast it from the graveyard so you're just like cool you die yep thanks pretty ridiculous that's just one of the many combos i've heard of of this and this card's insanity agreed it's definitely a card to pick up Next one is a Majestic Oricorn. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, you, I was like, you go it's ahead. the Majestic Oricorn. Like you said, it is a one and one white and four for a four four with vigilance. When this creature mutates, you gain four life, and it mutates for a white and three. I actually really like this card. I think it's really strong and limited because yeah. it's so big, and it has an extra ability of mutate gain four life. That doesn't seem like a lot, but it is really cool for what it does in limited. And the fact that you pay four for a four four vigilance, that's pretty on par with green. Pretty yeah. good. Uh, this one is a main serval. It's a one and a white vigilance cat. It's a one four. That's all it is. I think it's it's a good pickup and limited a one of just so you can mutate on it for later. Yeah, and if you have that other card with vigilance, you just get to be like, hey, my dudes, because like every card I've seen in white has vigilance right Almost, now. Almost, yeah, pretty much. And it's just like, hey, I'm block all day. Next up is the Mythos of Snapdax. It is two white and two for a sorcery. Each player chooses an artifact, cr a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among the non-land permanents they control, then sacrifices the rest. If red and black was spent to cast this spell, you choose the permanents for each player instead. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, this card is insanity. You're yeah. like, okay, cool. I'm going to pay these and uh, kill those because I can. Yeah, kill, kill those. And you get to keep that, 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 and that. That little token, that's, that's the only creature you get to have. Thank yeah. you very much. It's insanity. Definitely a pickup for standard. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next one is Pacifism, classic card. It's one in a white enchantment aura. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. And I like the art of this one for sure. Yeah, it, Pacifism really good. It's yeah. a standard, it, or it's a it's a limited staple. Like, yeah, card is insanity and limited. It's, You're just like no. Yeah, it's a limited uh, kill card for mm -hmm. two. Done. Next up is Pat uh, Patagia Tiger. It is a white and four for a three, four flyer. And whenever it enters the battlefield, target human you control gets plus two, plus two. It's cool. Uh, it's... These cards are always kind of traps to me. I don't like yeah. them. They don't really feel like they do enough. Uh, but it is an okay card in limited. So 
If you're playing it, it's a really good bomb. Yeah, I would. I think it's a filler because it's a three-four flyer, which is good and limited. Like those stats are okay, but depending on if like. I feel like in limited, it's either all humans or no humans, just because mutate like messes up with that. But mm -hmm. anyways, uh, parameter sergeants next. It's or is it perimeter? Perimeter. Sergeant. Yeah, I don't why I read it that way. Perimeter <laughs> sergeant, two and a white, three two. Uh, when attacks <laughs> other humans you control, get plus one until in a turn. Now this guy is good for limited. Yeah, limited. He's real good if you're playing humans. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't really see him being useful. So. Yeah. Uh, next up is Sanctuary Lockdown. It is a white and two for an enchantment. Humans you control get plus one plus one. Pay two, tap two, untapped humans you control, tap target creature and opponent controls. Yeah. Limited, this card is awesome because it's a pump spell and a creature control card. Yep. Which is ridiculous. And with humans, you know you can be throwing out tokens left and right, so that'll work for sure. Uh, Save, Sabertooth. It's a one and a white, three one. Because you need them. You need a three one in the in a set they always will print some form of this card yep it is a two drop three one that always gets printed yep limited yeah. filler next up is the snare tactician it is a white and two for a two three human soldier whenever you cycle a card tap target creature and opponent controls yeah so it's another one of those cycling cards that's good if you're building around in limit or in standard but otherwise it's a limited okay card yeah a uh, solid footing it's a one drop uh, enchantment Aura has Flash, Chan Creature, gets plus one plus one. As long as the creature has Vigilance, which most of them do, it assigns combat damage equal to the toughness rather than its power. And I don't know how many times I've put this on the 1-4 cat with Vigilance and swung for five on turn three, and it feels really good. Yeah, it's pretty insanity. Yeah. Card is definitely good in it, Limited yeah, and Standard. Definitely good. Next up is the Splendor Mare. It is a white and two for a 3-3 three, three with Lifelink. And whenever you cycle it, you put a lifelink counter on target creature you control and it cycles for a white and one. This card I actually like a whole lot because it's a really good statted dude. It's a 3 3 lifelinker for three. Yeah. And it can cycle if you don't need it and draw a card and gain lifelink. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. The, these ability counters really bust up the game quite a bit because you're like, I already have a big creature. Why not just draw a card and put yeah. a lifelink on him? Yeah. It's silly. Next one is Spontaneous Flight, also very powerful and limited. It is two and a white instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two in a turn. That's okay. Put a flying counter on it. This is usually just, it has flying until in a turn. No, this is, it has flying forever. Yeah, that card's mm. awesome. Super good and limited. And it's a common, so pick them up. Yeah. Next up is a Stormwild Cap Rider. He is a white and two for a one, three bird goat. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. typing, I'm not it's gonna a, lie. It's a bird goat. It's got flying. If non-combat damage will be dealt to Storm Wilder, prevent that damage. Put a one counter on him for each one damage prevented this way. He's pretty good. He's good. He's great and limited because he's a 1-3 flyer yeah. for three. Limited, he's awesome. If you can stack up power or toughness on him, this dude gets out of hand real quick. Yeah, exactly. I feel like the <coughs> there's a trap with these cards. The fact that no one's gonna try to burn it because they it says on the card don't burn this card <laughs> so you know it's man but the next one is swallow hole it's one a white sorcery it's kind of weird as an additional cost to cast a spell tap an untapped creature you control exile target tap creature put a one one counter on the creature tap to pay this spell's additional cost extremely good like i would almost put it in standard because it's like a Swords of Plowshare with extra steps, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm reading it and yeah, I'm just yeah. like, what? You have to take a little bit. So you have to have a dude to even play this guy and you tap it to as an additional cost to kill a dude that's already tapped, but you exile it and your dude gets bigger. So it's great if you play a guy and they already swung and then you just immediately like tap them to do it. It, it does seem useful because yeah. yeah, like you said, it's a sword. I, I actually see this card being in standard a lot because it's a one drop removal spell. Yeah. Sure, it has stipulations which kind of take away from it a lot, but it is still really powerful for what it does. Yeah, it doesn't have instants, but yeah, that's okay. Uh, next up is the Valiant Rescuer. It is a one white and one for a three one human soldier. Whenever you cycle another card for the first time each turn, create a one one white soldier. And he cycles for two, and he is running away from dinosaur mans. Yep. And he's a 3-1 with benefit, so yeah. that's the first time I've seen that. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Definitely in, in uh, limited. limited. 
Otherwise, I don't see that here. No, not at all. Uh, Bullockeet? Uh, I feel like there uh, should be something after that. He's a 4-drop, 2-3 flying. Whenever this creature mutates, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So it's al already a 3-4, pretty much. But you mutate for 3, 2 and a white. So your 2-drop becomes a flyer that's bigger, and it's really good. Like, mutate is ridiculously powerful, I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah, that card is insanity for yeah. what it does. Next up, Will of the All Hunter. It is a one white and one for a instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn. If it's blocking, instead put two one one counters on it. Cycling for two. That card's a neat, like that's <laughs> yeah. a weird twist. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely a really good trick in limited because you can be like, cool, save my dude on attack if I have to, or if I'm like, cool, let's just chill with my vigilance dudes because I have a bajillion of them. Yeah. This dude gets two counters. Yeah, yeah, he's bigger and you killed your dude. Yeah, how fair is that? Yeah, pretty not fair. Oh yeah. But with that, that ends uh, the white and we'll get into the blue. All right, and the first one is Aegis Turtle. It's a one drop zero five. It's, I guess it's there to mutate and that's about it. Yeah, it's pretty neat, but yeah, yeah whatever. That's it. Uh, next up is a reprint, Anticipate. It is one blue and one. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one in your hand and the rest on the bottom in any order. It is a really good uh, reprint. And you just, it, it helps you dig. Yep. It's good and limited. It's good, good and standard. standard. Just a good card. Yep. I guess with the turtle, we can say it's a build around limited card, but other than that, don't play it. Mm -hmm. All right. Archipelagor. I was about to say Archipelagor is five, six, seven drop. It's a seven, seven, seven drop with Leviathan. Whenever this card mutates, tap up to X target creatures, where X is the number of times this creature is mutated. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's untap step, so it frost breaths them. And the mutate is actually less. So for six, you can put this on a dude for a seven seven that hopefully taps two dudes at least, and then they don't untap. Yeah, that dude's a bomb in limited. Yeah. Like, I'll crush you in limited with that. Because if you're able to like protect him and then also just keep mutating on him to tap their dudes constantly forever, then you're just like, cool, I'll just keep winning. Yeah. Next is the Avian Oddity. It is a blue and three for a 2-4 bird with flying, and whenever you cycle it, put a flying counter and target creature you control. It cycles for a blue and two. That's good. This card is really good and limited because it's 2-4 flyer, and it has the ability to get flying and draw a card. Yeah. Dead. And you're like, I need this bigger dude to swing in. Yeah, get any of these dudes that are either a dude or cycle and give something, yeah. regardless, they seem like they're really, really good. Super powerful, limited bomb, and I wish the creature type was birds, because of how many wings <laughs> are attached to this one thing. Yeah. All right, the next one is Boom of the Wish Giver. It's four and two blue sorcery, draw four cards, uh, cycle the pay one. I've only used this to really cycle, because once you get to six, you want to do a lot of more other things, and you want to play more than one spells. So it's, it's good, it's okay, and limited. Yeah. Next is the Capture Sphere. It is a blue and three for a flash enchant creature. Whenever it enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. That creature does not untap. So it's really good uh, pacifism. Blue always has one of these. And this is the one for this set. And it's, it's decent and limited just because it takes out a dude. Yeah, it's a blue kill card. You got to do it. Oh, you're big dude? Go it. And I just realized what was on the art of this card. These two are on a lot of cards. And I can't wait to get to red to show it. <laughs> Interspecies Erotica coming up, for sure. <laughs> Convolute, it's a two and a blue instant. Counter target spell unless the controller pays four. So it needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So limited good, greatness. I like, I, I'm starting to like counter spells more in limited because there's a lot of powerful things that happen. Yeah. Uh, Crustacean, it is a blue and three for a flash crab with a one six. It's a decent limited card. Yeah. It's not really anything else. If you play the flash deck, definitely put them in. Dream Tell uh, Heroin, right? Yeah, Dream Tell Heroin. Yeah. yeah, okay, Heroin, Heroin, for some reason. It's four in the blue, three, four, flying. Whenever this creature mutates, draw a card. It's because its mutate cost is four. So you just play four, put it on this dude. It's a three, four, fly that draws you a card. Limited awesomeness. Yeah. Next is the escape protocol. It is a blue and one for an enchantment. Whenever you cycle a land card, or when you cycle a card, yeah. you may put you may pay one. When you do exile target artifact or creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Oh, so they re they made Astral Slide again. That's literally what Astral Slide is, except it was free. 
That yeah. one's you have to pay. That one you pay, but it's still good. You're just like cool. Cycle, blink that dude. Neat. Yeah, blink it. I get extra bonuses. Definitely good and limited because it helps like protect you because you can be like cycle, remove that dude, draw a card, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And of course, the standard build around for sure. Now, I think this is the best art for this card. It's Essence Scatter. It's a blue and a white instant counter target creature spell. Been around for years. Yeah. Definitely a good sideboard card. Amazing limited card too. Next up is the Facet Reader. He is a blue and one for a human wizard. And you pay one, tap, draw a card, then discard a card. It's an okay looter. Yeah. It's not really great, but it's definitely usable and limited. Yeah, not too bad. Next one is Frost Links. This two and a blue, two, two. And here's a battlefield tap target creature opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap to its controller's neck untap set. With that enchantment, you swing with this guy and then you bounce it. Exile it comes back, makes another dude not untap. So. Yeah. And this is the worst reprint art I've seen. Yeah, it's, it's kind of ugly. It's weird. No, it's not it's, good. It's not good. Next up is the Frostvale Ambush. It is two blue and three for a instant. Tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during the controller's next untap. You can pay one to cycle it. This card's really good and limited just because you can cycle and it just seems really, really strong. Yeah, really. Or late game, you use it to win a game, yeah. which I've done in limited for sure. Next one is Glimmer Bell. It's one in a blue, flying one three, and then you can pay one in a blue to untap it, which it's great to mutate on. I tell you that much right now. Oh yeah, because all the dudes get untapped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Neat. great. Next is the Gust of Wind. It is a blue and three for a sorcery. This spell costs two less to cast if you control a creature with flying. And return target non land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. Draw a card. Yep. This is a really strong, uh, like, limited card. Yeah. Because you're like, cool, two mana, bounce target non land permanent, and draw a card. Like, you get so much value for this if you have a flyer. Yeah. And I would, it's a build around standard because if you play blue white flyers and you play this card immediately. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's, I can't remember the name of that card, but you pay two or pay two more to overload to draw a card and bounce a dude. This is basically that for two. Yeah. So it's really good. And it hits a permanent. Yeah. Doesn't care. Like it hits a non land permanent. So, but anything. It's super good. Hampering Snare. It's one in a blue instant. Creatures your opponent's control get minus two until in a turn. Cycle for two. If you build it on cycle limited, but besides that, I would not play this card. Yeah. Next is the Keep Safe. It is a blue and one counter target spell that targets a permanent you control. Draw a card. That's this good. is a good counter spell that's going to be in standard because it counters a spell and draws to a card. Yeah, exactly. It's a remand, but not as strong. Uh, next one is Ma Ma Mystic Subduel. It's a one and a blue and with a silly dragon tongue. Enchantment Aura. Flash, enchant creature. It gets minus two and loses all abilities. That's the keyword because if it mutates like three dudes and you just like lose all your abilities. Yeah, and so, it says it on there that mutating won't give it new abilities. Yeah. Wow. So limited goodness and probably a bomb for sure. But it could still gain abilities through counters. Because huh. it, it literally reads it underneath it. It can gain abilities in other ways. In other ways. So, so you're then, like, hey, give a flying counter to this dude afterwards, then it always Because it's a counter, it's a separate thing I can't control. <clears throat> yeah. Next is the Mythos of Iluna. It is two blue and two for a create a token of a copy target permanent. Me. If red and green was spent to cast this spell, instead create a token that's a copy of that permanent, except that token has one of its permanent is battlefield. If it's a creature, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. So it's a really cool clone. That's, yeah. I, I like it because it's a it's the same cost as clone, and it gives you a, a permanent and it can fight a bear. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take a fight bear clone it's all day. It's not too bad. I would use this in limited for sure, because it gives you a free dude. Yeah. And it I would build around this in standard, honestly. And you can copy their dude, so it's all good. Mm-hmm. Next one is Naturalize. Neutralize. neutralize. I was like, why is that the same name as the green one? No, it's Neutralize, yeah. One and two blue instant counter target spell. All right, and then you have Cycle for two. So, pretty awesome. Yeah, cancel with cycling, please. Yeah. Yeah, definitely playable in the formats. Yep. Next is Of One Mind. It is a blue and two for a sorcery. This spell costs two less to cast if it if you're a creature if a human if you control a human creature and a non-human creature. Yeah. Draw two cards. So yeah, I actually think this card's really strong and limited for sure. Yeah. Because it's one mana draw two if you control two dudes. And there's a red card that literally creates 
a dinosaur or any human for two. So by turn three, you can draw two cards for one. It's really good. Yeah. Ominous Seas. It's a one in a blue enchantment. Whenever you draw a card, put a foreshadow counter on the seas. Remove eight counters and create an 8 8 blue Kraken token. And then it has cycling too. So if you just uh, keep drawing stuff, then if you keep cycling, then you can put counters on this guy to make it 8 8. Now, I've never seen it pop. I've just seen them waste cards and time to make it pop. But I can tell you right now, this card in like Commander is going to be silly. Yeah, this. Yeah. Because you're just like this card in Force Fruition where everybody draws seven and you play a spell. You're just like, let's put Run. some counters on this dude. <laughs> the fact that you don't have to sacrifice the seas either makes yeah. it awesome. Next up is the Phase Dolphin. It is a blue and two for a 1 4 elemental whale. Whenever it attacks, another target attacking creature can't be blocked this turn. Really good limited for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely limited bomb. Polywog Symbiote. It's a 1 and a blue, 1 3 frog. Each creature spell you cost costs one less to cast if it has mutate. Whenever you cast a creature spell if it has mutate, draw a card, then discard a card. Very, very good. This dude seems insanity with mutate. Yeah, especially in, I would use in standard mutate deck for sure. Oh, yeah. Next up, Pouncing Shore Shark. Yeah. It is a blue and four for a 4 3 shark beast. When it's got flash, whenever this creature mutates, you may return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Yeah. And mutates for a blue and three. This dude's really, really strong because it's a four drop, four three with flash. That bounces a guy. That bounces one of your opponent's dudes. So you get more advantage while you take away theirs. Yeah. And what's scarier than a shark? Than a shark with arms. Yeah. Yeah, the dude's insanity. <laughs> like that dude. All right, reconnaissance mission. It's two and two blue enchantment. Whenever a creature you control deals damage to a player, you draw a card. Cycle two. I feel like this could be played in standard, to be honest, like a one or two of. Because you're just like, I play blue aggro, I draw cards when I hit you, mm -hmm. that's what I want to do. And really good and limited. Next up is the Sea Dasher Octopus. It is two blue and one for a two two with flash. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. As simple as that. And it mutates for a blue and one. So this card is definitely a good mutate card. Yeah. So if you're playing blue mutate, you definitely need this guy in standard. You, it all, it's almost like the ninja effect, right? So if it wasn't blocked, you immediately play this guy and then give the whatever creature to be able to draw you a card when it hits. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, you want to talk about this guy? No. Okay. Talk about okay. It. I'll talk about it in a second. All right. Shark Typhoon. It's five and a blue enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, where X is the target spells converted mana cost. Cycling, you can pay X one and a blue, discard a card, draw a card. But when you cycle, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying. It's Sharknado. Yeah. We needed a Sharknado <laughs> and I'm so for it. Because I love it's... dumb horror movies and shark movies. I love them. Yes. And this is fantastic. It's super, it's good. Also, in general, this card is actually just good. Yeah. Because, yes, it costs six, but it literally says when you cast a non-creature spell, get a free dude. Oh, I'll just get a 1-1 one, one for playing a Brainstorm. Yeah. And then I'll counter your spell for three and get a 3-3. Three, three. Get a 3-3 three, three flying. Like, the, the sharks have flying. Great. And it's insanely good. And if you just need to, then you can create a 2-2 two, two for four, draw a card, and then make a 2-2 two, two flyer. Yeah, and cycling's at any time, so you can literally be like, I need it in the game. I'm going to pay cycling for five. Yeah. And get a 5-5 five, five blue shark token to flying. Like, it's, it's ridiculous how good this card actually kind of is. Oh, yeah. Limited bomb, for sure. Yeah. It'd be rough, but I could see it in standard. Next is the startling development. It is a blue and one for an instant. Till the end of turn, target creature becomes a blue serpent with base power 4-4 four, four, and it cycles for one. Yeah. It's good. Limited, it's really good. Yeah. Because you can block and kill a dude. That's some, Or you make their big dude a 4-4 four, four, and you can kill it. Mm -hmm. So there you go. The next one is Thieving Otter. It's two and a blue otter, two two, deals damage to an opponent, draw a card. That's it. It's a magpie, dude. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, next up is the voracious great shark. It is two blue and three for a sh flash five four shark. And when it enters the battlefield, counter target artifact or creature spell. Oh yeah. So we're we're playing a giant mystic snake. Yep. And ah, awesome. I would play it in standard. Yeah, it's a 5-4 with flash that counters a spell. Yeah. That dude's real good. He just eats it. Om nom nom. Especially if you play blue-green flash, 
then you're just like, I have a four drop that counters your dude, and then I have a five drop that counters yeah. your dude as well. Next one is Wingfold, uh, Tarion. It's a five and a, it's six mana cost, so five and a blue, three, six, dinosaur. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you can choose a flying counter or a hexproof counter on it. And a three, six hexproof is extremely annoying and limited. Yeah. Especially if you mutate onto it and it's just dumb. That's awesome. It, it's good. Yeah, that's real awesome. Limited, this dude is kind of a bomb. Yeah. Next up is the Wingspan Mentor. It is a blue and two for a 1-3 human wizard. He enters the battlefield, put a flying counter on target non-human creature you control. Pay a blue and two, tap, put a 1-1 counter on each creature with flying. Yep. Dude's pretty strong and limited if you're playing a whole bunch of flyers, which it looks like blue has. Yeah, and yeah, put this in a blue white flyer deck as I did in limited, and it's powerful as hell. Oh yeah. With that, there's the end of blue, and we'll jump on into black. Alright, and the first black card that we have is Bastion of Remembrance. It's two and a black enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier token. Whenever a creature you you control dies, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. That's a blood artist with a little extra in standard, and I will play the hell out of it. And it's harder to kill, and it's an enchantment. Exactly. So I would play it in limited, because you're going to make sure you're going to squeeze your opponent real fast playing humans, yeah. and then you'll get there. Yeah, it, the card is real strong in all the formats. Yep. Next up is Blitzleech. It is a black and five for a 5-2 with flash. Inches of battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus two, minus two until the end of the turn. Remove all counters from that card. So this dude's really good and limited if you're playing against a whole bunch of counters. Yep. And it says all counters, so all 1-1 counters, all flying counters. Exactly. All, I don't care what counters you have on you, go away. Just done. We're done here. Yeah. It's really good and limited. And the dude's pretty strong. Next one is Blood Curdle. It's three and a black instant. Destroy target creature. Put a menace counter on the creature you control. This guy is a limited bomb. And for to being a common, I've never seen it while in any of my drafts, so that makes me sad. But it's, it just, I would play it in standard. If you play a menace deck, like I think there will be a black red one, this guy is uh, so good. Yeah, it's a really good kill spell to give, give, give kill and menace. Yeah. You're, you have three, like you have two dudes, well, you gotta kill one and then my dude can be blocked, so thanks. Next up is the Boot Nipper. He is a black and one for a 2 1 beast. He enters the battlefield with your choice of death touch or lifelink counters. Yep. So you get to choose one and he gets one or the other. Yep. And it's going to be a death touch one every time because that's yeah. super good. There's always that time when you're like, you got a good big creature in your hand and then they play that one drop, one one death touch and you're like, well, I can't do anything. That's what that guy is. Next one is Bushmeat Poacher. It's three and a black, two, four. Pay one, tap, sacrifice another creature. You gain life equal to the creature's toughness, and you draw a card. It's just good and limited. It costs a little bit much, but the ability of doing all that is really good. Yeah. Next is Call of the Death Dweller. It is a black and two for an instant or for a sorcery. Return up to two target creature cards with total cost three or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. Put a death touch counter on either of them. Then put a menace counter on either of them. I don't know why this is not rare. This is ridiculously powerful, and I think in modern it's already like gonna take over. Yeah, this card seems real strong, just because it it puts two dudes into play, and one gets death touch and one gets menace. Like, and it's three or less, not two or less. Like, you know how many powerful creatures there are in three or less? Yeah, it gets insane. a lot. Insane. This card is. Yes, it's a bomb card in all formats. Next one is Cavern Whisper. It's a four and a black, four, four. It has menace, and whenever this creature mutates, each opponent discards a card. And the fact that the mutate is less, it costs four, is really good and limited. Because you just put this on a three drop, and they discard a card, and that three drop has now, it's a four, four menace, pretty much. Yeah, this dude's pretty, pretty wild. Pretty silly. Next up is the Chittering Harvester. It is a black and five for a four six, and whenever this creature mutates, each opponent sacrifices a creature, and a black and four uh, is the mutate cost. And it's good. Yeah, it's pretty just, good. Just play them. Just play them in limited. Why not make them sack their dudes? All right, next one is Corpse Churn. It's one in a black instant. Put the top three cards of your library in the graveyard, then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. It may seem weak, but it's extremely annoying to play against when you see it. So, in limited, it's good. 
Next up is the Dark Bargain. It is a black and three for an instant. Look at the top three of your library, put two in your hand and the other in the graveyard. Dark Bargain does two damage to you. I want to say this is a reprint, but I'm not sure. I know this card's like it. Yeah, yeah. But, but there's a lot that costs two and three, but this one costs four. Yeah, this card seems okay. It's it's a usable card in limited if you yeah. have to. A one of for sure. Next one is a dead weight. It's one black enchantment or it gets a creature minus two, minus two. It's really good. Yeah, this card is awesome and limited because you just get kill most things or just make them smaller. Yep, and make uh, black white enchantment matters for standard. It's super, I would use it. Oh yeah. Next up is the Dirge Bat. He has two black and two for a three, three flash with flying. When this creature mutates, destroy target creature or planeswalker and opponent oh, controls, God. and he mutates for six. I so, didn't, I've never seen this creature. So two black and four, you get to mutate, flash flying, and kill a thing. This or, dude's pretty good. Or I will definitely use this dude in standard because he's strong. And because I mean you're already you've already played Titans. They're just they're, they're just as strong as this dude. And he's got flash. You're like, cool, kill that dude. Thanks. Yeah. Nah. Or in a turn, play this guy, untap. I mutate him, destroy that planeswalker or that creature. Yeah. Maybe two mutates by that point. God. Yeah, because it is when you mutate, and this dude, you can play him for cheap and not worry about his mutate, and then just mutate onto him. Yeah, with cheaper creatures. It's pretty silly. Jesus. Get that guy immediately. All right, durable coil bug. It's one in a black, two, two, and the ability is pay five, return coil bug from your graveyard to your hand. And it's super annoying. It's not like, well, well there's skeletons that do this, but they're one ones, but a two two blocking all your small dudes and then coming back, it, I hate it. It's annoying and limited. <laughs> yeah. Next up is the Duskfang Mentor. She is a black and two for a one three human cleric. Whenever it enters the battlefield, put a lifelink counter and target non human creature you control. Pay a black and one, put a one counter on each creature with lifelink. That gets out of hand real quick and oh, limited. Oh yeah. And the fact, I think this is the better of them all just because lifelink gets better for how many counters you put on it. So that works. Easy Prey is the next one. It's one in a black instant, destroy target creature with converted mana cost two or less, and then it has a cycle of two. It, play this in all formats. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to. It kills pretty much anything it needs to early, yeah. which is what you want. And the art is awesome because the dude's about to kill that thing, kill. and then he's about to die to big dinosaurs. Yeah, he's about to kill a little Murloc. Murloc. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, and the fact that if they have big dudes, you cycle for two. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Next up is Extinction Event. It is a black and three sorcery. Choose odd or even. Exile each creature with convert mana cost of the chosen value. Zero is even. <laughs> yeah. So it is a Wrath of God for black on a creature t or a. Uh, with, number with some stipulations yeah it's still a wrath of god for black which is super strong and we haven't had with them in a minute and it exiles yeah and it's pick it up for commander for token decks because you're like just even haha <laughs> yeah just in general pick that card up it's really really good the next one is gloom pangolin it's a two and a black one five he's a nightmare and he's just he's okay he's a one five for early game for limited if you are like a control deck and then he can be mutated on easily so it's okay only a filler i think yeah next up is grim dancer it is two black and one for a three three nightmare he enters the battlefield with your choice of two different counters on it menace death touch and lifelink so you're like cool i need a death touch lifelinker let's go yeah this this art is insane like i can stare at it for hours and just like i don't know go it into the void yeah, yeah. It's really, really strong card in limited because it's a three drop. I, I definitely see it being able to use in standard, honestly, too, because yeah. it's a three drop, three three with two abilities. Exactly, and you'd be like death touch menace. You really want to block with two dudes? Yeah, because you're gonna lose them. All right, next one is heartless act. It's one in a black instant. Choose one, destroy target creature with no counters on it. Remove up to three counters from target creature. Um, I think it's better than the. Uh, Dark Blade or whatever it is. Doom Blade. Yeah, no, this card is one of the strongest kill spells I've seen in a minute. Yes. Because it gets rid of anything it needs to, whether it's kill a dude with no counters or remove the counters. And it doesn't specify which counters. So yeah. you're like, oh, you have flying and lifelink? Go it. Just remove those counters, thanks. And that one one counter off. Yeah. Of and the fact that it's, it costs two and it's instant and it kills almost everything ever. 
Yeah, that it's is a, silly. It's insane. Next up is the Hunted Nightmare. It is two black and one for a four five menace nightmare. It inches a battlefield target opponent puts a death touch counter on a creature they control. I like this dude a whole lot. I really do. Because mm -hmm. he's a three drop four five with menace, so he's hard to block. Yeah. And sure, they get a death touch dude, but if they only have one dude, well, you keep killing their dudes so they only have one dude? Yeah. What does it matter? You exactly. can't block this dude. And it's like one of the best creatures to have against control. Because you just pop this down and then you just keep swinging like hard. Mm -hmm. And then you just protect them and then you win. Because they're, mean, they're not going to have a creature by turn one through three. Yeah. And if they do, you, they're playing black. You literally just kill it. Yeah. And you get no downside. It's just, you just have a three drop four five that's like, ah, keep going. Like swing, swing swing and you just beat that insatiable hemophage is the next one it's three and a black it's a nightmare of course it's a three three death touch whenever this creature mutates each opponent loses x life and you gain x life equal to where x is the number of times this creature has mutated the mutate cost is three so that's very cheap to do and pretty awesome i haven't seen this in action but i feel like it can get over a hand and limited yeah definitely yeah Next up is the Lurking Deadeye. He is a black and three for a 4-2 flash in an inches of the battlefield destroyed target creature that was dealt damage this turn. It's, it's a decent card and limited because it can kill a dude, but yeah. it's not really like a major, major card. No, I've never, the only thing I've really found a use for is literally just a four drop that block, or a three drop, yeah, four drop that blocks of something with four toughness. Like I've never been able to get it off to kill a dude either way. The next one is Memory Leak. It's two and a black a sorcery. Target creature, target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose an online card from that player's graveyard or hand and exile it. And then it has Cycling One. It's okay. Yeah, it's, it's a it's, decent discard spell, but nothing like yeah, crazy. Yeah, okay and limited. Yeah. Next up is Mutual Destruction. It is a black sorcery. The spell has flash as long as you control permanent with flash. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature and then you destroy a creature. This card is going to be useful in any kind of token deck super hard because it's one mana kill a dude yep. and you're losing tokens so you don't care. And it has the added bonus of it can be instant. Yeah. I always like Bone Splinters and I always thought if it was an instant I would use it constantly. And the fact there is a black blue flash deck you can make. Yeah. Definitely. This one. Mythos of Nethery. Nethery. It's two and a black instant. Destroy target non-land permanent if it's a creature. Or if you pay with a green and white Abzan was spent to cast a spell. Or if it was spent with Abzan. So that basically means to destroy target creature or if this was spent, destroy a non-land permanent. I don't know why they worded it that way, but it, it works. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's kind of a dark banishing that can be anything. It, it's a dark banishing that can be a Vindicate, which yeah. is actually really cool. Yeah. For three mana, that's, that's really strong because it's... It is literally just to Vindicate. Like, destroy, or non-land permanent, right? Does Vindicate get? Vindicate hits a, a land, but oh, okay. whatever. Yeah. Same same idea. It's just like, it gets rid of whatever you need. Sorry, Maelstrom Pulse. Oh, That's there, better. yeah. Next up is the Night Squad Commando. He is a black and two for a two, three human soldier. He enters the battlefield. If you attack this turn, create a one, one human soldier token. So you play in second main phase and you're like, cool, I get free dudes. Yep. Good, good and limited. Yeah, limited goodness. Next one is Serrated Scorpion. It's a 1 drop 1 2. When it dies, deals 2 damage to each opponent and you gain 2 life. It's funny when you mute the creature onto this and they forget that ability. <laughs> so they kill your big dude and they lose 2 life and lose the game or whatever. It's good. It's really yeah. good and limited. That dude seems real strong and limited. Yeah. Next up is Suffocating Fumes. It is a black and 2. Instant creatures you control, your opponents control, get minus 1 minus 1, and then cycles for 2. It's okay. Like, I feel like this could. Could have been better, but I never got a really good chance to use it. Yeah, it it's seems a, decent, but I don't know. It's a trap, mostly. <laughs> Unbreakable Bond. It's four and a black sorcery. Return to a creature can, card from the, your graveyard to the battlefield with a lifeline counter on it. For the other return creature cards, this one's the weakest one out of the set. But it's decent and yeah. limited. This one costs a lot. And it has a armadillo raccoon, so that's pretty cute. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Next up, Unexpected Fangs. It is a black and one instant. 
Put a 1-1 one -one counter and a lifelink counter on target creature. This card is awesome. So that is a 2-mana instant trick in limited that is uh, game-breaking, actually. Because yeah. you're like, hey, this dude's bigger and I gain life. Yeah, kill your dude and I gain life and it's gonna keep gaining life, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Another game-breaking one is Unlikely Aid. 1 in a black instant, but target creature target creature gets plus 2 and 0 and gains indestructible into the turn. Yes, it's the combat trick you need in limited. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Next is the Void Beckoner. He is two black and six for an eight eight nightmare horror. He is death touch. Whenever you cycle him, put a death touch counter on target creature you control and it cycles for three. I think it's basically a cycle kill your dude block. That's blocking or being blocked. Yeah, I don't really like this dude that much. He's cool. Yeah. But you're paying a lot for that. Yeah, so I'd rather just cycle him. It's still cycles three. When we've had like cycles of one and such, and yeah. you have played black too with the cycle, yeah, yeah. The next one is Whisper Squad. It's, it's one black, one one. Uh, so you pay one in the black, search your library for a card named Whisper Squad, put it in a battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. That's kind of cute. Yeah, it's a neat card, but it's not really that good unless you're in limited. Yeah, if limited, because you can have as many as you want if you just build a whole squad of them. Yeah, it'd be pretty epic. <laughs> it's just like ah, get all these. <laughs> Yeah. Next up is the Zagoth Mamba. It is a 1 black for a 1 1. When this creature mutates, target creature and opponent controls gets minus 2, minus 2. The dude's really strong and limited because you're like, hey, mutate all the things on here and your dude dies. Yeah. Sweet. And guess what? A lot of creatures are 2 or less in the set. Like, unless you mutate them, a lot of them can die really quick. With that, that is the end of the black. And we'll go ahead and jump on to the red. And the first card is Blazing Volley. It's 1 red sorcery. Deals one damage to each creature your opponent controls. I don't like this card. I don't. I think it's it's meh, and I wouldn't play it ever. Yeah, it's really not worth it. It doesn't do a whole lot. Sure, it kills one ones, but I mean, meh. And meh. Next up is the Blister Spur Gremlin. It is one red for a one one Gremlin. You pay one tap. He deals one damage to each opponent. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, untap him. It's kind of cool. I think it's cool and limited. I don't see it being doing a lot otherwise. Yeah. But just to remind you, it costs one to tap. Other ones all like this just tap instead. But it's like it's very taxing. Like the more I try to play with this card, I'm like, this guy's not that good. Yeah. Cause if you want to keep casting spells multiple times and do it, it doesn't really work out. Yeah. Blitz of the Thunder Raptor. That's one in a red instant. Uh, deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the number of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard. That creature or walker would die this turn, exile it instead. It's uh, good and limited because there is a Spells Matters deck for sure. And in standard, it could be good sideboard. Like, especially against planeswalkers, and you just like, well, bring that Teferi out of here. So they can do uh, Elspeth's enchantment and then get it back or whatever. Yeah. Next up is the Cathartic Reunion. It is a red and one for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, discard two cards, and then draw three cards. I do believe this is a reprint, and it is a really strong card for what it does. Yep. It's it's okay. Definitely play it in standard if you build around it. But. Yeah, for sure. Next one is Clash of Titans. It's three and two red instant. Target creature fights another target creature. And why it costs so much? Because it says target creature, not you. You control. So you can be like, make your opponents two creatures fight. Oh, no. okay. That makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, this seems awful. Yeah, I would rather just play Prey and Funk. One. Exactly. I, I honestly would not. I think it costs a little too much, and I, I wouldn't do it. Because yeah. what if you kill one small dude and their big dude gets uh, still alive? It, it's not worth it. Yeah. Next up is Cloud Piercer. He is a red and four for a 5-4 Dinosaur Man's. He's got reach. Whenever this creature mutates, you may just card a card, and if you do, draw a card. Its mutate cost is a red and three. So you just give an extra looter ability on mutates. It's yeah. Pretty good. In fact, that costs four for a five four that can attack that turn. It's pretty devastating. Yeah. It's this, pretty insane. Yeah. The next one is, is uh, Drenith Stinger. It's one in a red, two two. Whenever you cycle another card, it deals one damage to each opponent, and then you pay one to cycle. And I think this is the better burn card for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely good in limited. Yeah. If you're, you're playing a cycling deck, it's really, really strong. Oh, yeah. Next up is the Everquill Phoenix. It is two red and two for a 4-4 four, four flyer. 
When this card mutates, create a red artifact token named Feather with one sacrifice Feather. Return target Phoenix card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And it mutates for a red and three. So I think this card is really damn good. Yeah, it, it is really strong because if you mutate it onto a dude, you get a chance to get this dude back, which is pretty cool. And it just, I don't know, it's limited. This card is a bomb because it's yeah. a, like a continual just card. Just keep coming back. Yeah. Limited, it can be really strong if it's done correctly. Uh, yeah, and standard, uh, the fact that it technically still has haste because most fantasies do for a 4-4 flying haste if you mutate onto a creature. And then it comes back to the battlefield whenever you want with the thing. So, And the fact that if you just was able to draw one and mutate and mutate onto it, then you just get multiple eggs to keep bringing it back. So really That's good. pretty good. Yeah. Ferocious Tiger Gorilla, or Tiger Gorilla. <laughs> it's three in a red, four, three. It's a cat ape. <laughs> Enters the battlefield, you choice of a trample counter or a menace counter on it. Very good and limited. Yeah, this dude is a limited bomb. Yeah, for a common, it's insanely good. Because you get to choose what you want. Yeah. Either way, you're going to get to hit them. Whether yeah. it's menace or trample, <laughs> Yeah. great. Exactly. Dude's insanity and limited. I could see him played in standard, not as a lot of, but yeah. he's still there. Well, especially since there's a creature that says whenever a creature with trample would <clears throat> be blocked, you can assign all damage to the player. Yeah. So with this guy, you can be like, this guy has trample. You can take four. Next up is the Fire Prophecy. It is a red and one for an instant. Deals three damage to target creature. You may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library. If you do, draw a card. Yes. That is a really good kill spell and limited because because you're like, kill that dude, put this away, draw a card. Yeah, put this land back. I don't need it, draw a card. Or in standard too. I feel like it can be very standard playable. Sure. Oh yeah. Next one is Flame Spill. Two in a red instant. Deals four damage to target creature. Excess damage is dealt to this creature's controller instead. Now, I was able to do this on a creature twice and kill the opponent with it because it was a 5-5. So I dealt 4 damage and I played this again, or I copied it, dealt 3 damage to the creature and to him, you know. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Pretty strong. It's really good. It's a really good limited card just because it's a spell with trample. Especially with any anything that says double damage. Yeah. So <laughs> this is going to do a lot of damage to your opponent. Oh, yeah. Next up is the Football Crater. It is a red enchantment aura. Enchant land. Enchanted land has tap. Target creature gains trample and haste until the end of the turn. Cycling is one. I know. This card's awesome. Yeah. Definitely draft this card because anything that gives your dude haste automatically is really strong. Trample and haste. Jeez, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, that's yeah, it's just tap. Dude gets trample and haste. Sure, it takes out one of your lands to make mana, Ooh. but you're like, cool. This dude gets haste. Die. Yeah, every turn just. Hey, Strim. Hey, Strim. Yeah. Forbidden Friendship. This is the interspecies erotica deck or card. It's one in red sorcery. Create a 1 1 red uh, dinosaur creature token with haste and a 1 1 white human soldier creature token. Now, like I said, with the draw spell in blue, you play this turn two, that draw spell is cost one blue. And it's just really good. I think it's good. Yeah, two mana get two limited. It's pretty strong. Yeah. Next up is the Frenzied Raptor. It is a red and two for a four-two dinosaur. It's really, it's it's a decent little basic dude. Yeah. Limited, it's a good filler card. And we're gonna get through a lot of red cards that give first strike counters for cheap. That do first strike counter wins. Let's see, uh, Frill Scare Mentor. It's a two and a red, human warrior, three-two. Enters the battlefield, put a menace counter on target non-human you control, and then pay three and tap a uh, one-one uh, counter on each creature you control with menace. Pretty, pretty decent. Yeah, pretty good and limited. Yep. Again, all those mentor dudes and limited are really strong. Yes. Next up, go for blood. It is a red and one for sorcery. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Cycling for one. Yeah. It's, it's a decent kill spell and limited. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I don't think it's really worth it. No. Especially since it's not instant for red, but I guess because it has cycling, but yeah. Heightened reflexes, one red instant. Target creature gets plus one until end of turn. Put a first strike counter on it. Play it in limited for sure. Like oh, one yeah. or two of. Because you like kill their dude and your dude has first strike forever. Yeah. Yeah. It is real strong. The, those counter abilities are insane. Next up is the Lava Serpent. It is a red and five for a five five haste. And it cycles for two. It's a decent common to use as a filler card. Yeah. And also anything that can survive in lava is terrifying. Exactly. 
Luca Copra Coat Outcast. It's a uh, three and two red, five loyalty, uh, Planeswalker. His plus one. Exile the top three cards of your library. Creature cards exiled this way again. You may cast this card from exile as long as you control the Planeswalker. Minus two. Exile target creature you control, then reveal cards from the top card of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mana cost. Put that card in the battlefield and the rest in the bottom of the library of random order. That's pretty cool. And minus seven, each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. <laughs> That dude's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, because it can ult real quick. So yeah. if you already have a board, you're just like, take a bajillion semi-fling damage. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah. I like him a lot, actually. I, I, I like him, too. Uh, definitely going to be playable. You got to build around him, but he's definitely very playable. I in standard. feel like if you just do like a tricksy, like these are token cards with one big creature, and then you exile your token creature to go get that one 12 drop or whatever for free... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next up is the Momentum Rumbler. He is a red and three for a three three dinosaur. And if it attacks, if it doesn't have first strike, put a first strike counter on it. If it attacks and it has first strike, it gains double strike completely in end of turn. Limited bomb. Yeah, limited greatness. Right. Because he just gets angry and then he gets angrier. Yeah. Forever. Like, no, not forever. Just no. angrier. Well, like double yeah. strikes. Take turn. Yeah, yeah, but still, you're gonna attack with this dude no matter what, so he'll always have double strike yeah. while attacking. It's good. Yeah, dude's wild. Yeah. Next one is Mythos of Vadrock. It's two and two red <clears throat> sorcery. It deals five damage to buy as you choose among any creatures or planeswalkers. If you played a blue and a white with it, uh, until the next turn, those permanents can't attack or block. Their activated abilities can't be activated. It's it's a good limited card for sure. Yeah, because you're just like, hey, that Planeswalker, don't use it. Boop, don't, take don't, one. Don't use it. Kill your dude. I'll swing in. Thanks. Next up is the Porky Parrot. There's a red and three for a three, four bird beast. Uh, tap. This creature deals X damage to any target where X is the number of times this creature has mutated and it mutates for a red and two. This dude's awesome. It, I like it because it's limited greatness and yeah. it can hit a player because it says any target. doesn't matter. Oh, wow. You're just like, cool, tap, take fucking, take five. Yeah, take five. Why not? The dude's insanity and limited. He's real strong and standard <laughs> if you play when you take cards. Yeah. But you're just like, cool, tap, take five. Or take whatever. Yeah, and the fact that you take cost is cheaper for three, just be like, bam, bam, tap. Bam, and bam, bam. it's a parrot and a porcupine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Porky parrot. I like it. Next one is a uh, prickly marmoset. It's two and a red, two, three, first strike. It's a monkey. Whenever you cycle a card, it gets plus two until in a turn. It's really good and limited. Yeah. Because they don't want to block the, with this guy ever again because it pretty much almost kills a lot of things. Yeah. Next up is a Pyroceratops. It is a Triceratops on fire. That's yeah. angry. That's scary. Uh, red and three for an elemental dinosaur. He's got trample for a two, three. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a one counter on him. This dude is gross in the right deck. Yep. Limited, this dude's real strong if you're playing all this, this sorcery and instance. You're just like, cool, this dude gets big. Yep. Swing. Because those most of those have put counters on him. So you're like, he gets trample, he gets lifelink, he gets menace, and bigger. The next one is Raking Claws. It's one in a red instant. Target creature gains double strike until in the turn, and it holds a cycle of two. I'm sure there's an instant kill deck somewhere with this card in standard, maybe. But in limited, it's okay. Yeah. Next up is the Reptilian Reflection. It is a red and two for an enchantment. Whenever you cycle a card, you may have Reptilian Reflection become a 5-4 dinosaur creature with trample and haste until the end of turn in addition to other types. Yeah. That card's actually really good in a cycling deck because yeah. it's it's a one and done kind of thing. It's not one and done, but like you're like, cool, cycle, this dude's a 5-4 swing. And then he goes back to being an enchantment, so you can't easily kill him. Yeah. And you're just like, cool, cycle again, take five. Yeah. The fact that this is a 5-4. Yeah. So, yeah. And most of the time you're just paying one, so you're like, pay one, I get a 5-4 trample haste. Yeah. That's insane. Rooting Mauler. It's a 4 and a red, 4-4. Four, four. Enters the battlefield, exile target card with cycling ability from your graveyard. Till in a turn, until your next turn, you may play that card. And then it has cycling for two. So, in the Cycles Matters deck for limited, I would definitely pick one of these up at least. Yeah. It's really good. 
Next up is the Rumbling Rock Slide. It is a red and three sorcery. It deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control. So at least minimum, it could be a three or four, because if you have a mana dork or whatever, but a four at least. Yeah, it's it's pretty decent. It limited, it's really cool. Yeah. I don't think it's worth it in standard because no. there's better stuff for four, but it's okay. Next one is Sanctuary Smasher. It's a four and two red, six, four, first strike. Whenever you cycle Smasher, put a first strike counter on target creature you control, and it's a uh, red and two. This guy is okay. Uh, the first strike, I think, is very, very strong and limited. So definitely, I would play play maybe one unlimited for filler. Yeah, yeah. Next up is Shredded Sails. It is a red and one for an instant. Destroy target artifact, or deals four damage to target creature with flying, and it cycles for two. It's a decent card as yeah. a sideboard card. It's not really anything else, I don't think, but it's decent. Yeah, unlimited. I would put one in the main board because there there is a lot of flyers, and the fact you can just cycle is nice. Yeah. Spell Eater Wolverine, he's very pissed. It's yeah. two and a red, three, two. It has double strike as long as there's three or more instant or sorceries cards in the graveyard, and that will happen quickly. Yeah, that dude's awesome in limited. Yeah, it's very powerful in limited. Wow, I yeah. like that dude. Next up is Tentative Connection. It is a red and three for a sorcery. The spell costs three less if you control a creature with menace. Gain control of target creature until the end of the turn, untap that creature, it gains haste. Yep. For this being one mana, this card is really strong. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, this card is not really good. Nope. Like, one mana in, in limited, and I'm totally cool with. Yeah. Let's see. Unpredictable Cyclone. It's three and two red enchantment. Bear with us. If a cycling ability of another non-land card would cause you to draw a card, instead exile cards from your top of your library until you exile a card that shares a card type with the cycled card. You may case, cast that card without paying its mana cost. And put it the exiled cards that were cast this way or weren't cast this way at the bottom of your library in a random order and then you could cycle for two that's kind of awesome <laughs> yeah so all of the uh, grip of chaos commander decks you just got another card that's like hey let's do some wild things yeah i like it just because you're like hey let's cycle this sorcery go get a sorcery and be like yeah play it play it for free so you can turn your cycle card into like an ultimatum and just be like hey thanks thanks <laughs> let's <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's, it's not like great. It's very random and maybe it'll work. Could it be fun to play in a cycling deck? I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Agreed. For sure. Next up is Weaponize the Monsters. It is a red enchantment. Pay two. Sacrifice a creature. Weaponize Monsters. Deals two damage to any target. I like it. So limited it's really cool because it just helps you end the game quickly. And if you're playing tokens it's really good because it gives you a sack outlet and damage. Yeah. For sure. All right. Yudaro, Wandering Monster. It's a 5 and 2 red, 8, 8, Dinosaur Turtle. Trample Haste. Now, he has cycling for a red and a 1. When you cycle him, shuffle him in your library from your graveyard. If you've cycled a card named this or more times this game, put it on the battlefield from your graveyard instead. So, yeah, that's what you do. You basically just keep cycling him, and then if you keep getting him, then you just have an 8, 8 for 2 instant speed it's really cute standard build around for sure yeah the card is pretty awesome maybe not just put him four in a standard deck i mean he's legendary but you don't care because he's a eight eight or two which replaced yeah that is it for red and we're gonna get into green yep the first green card we got is adventurous impulse it is one green look at the top three cards of your library you reveal a creature or land from among them and put it into your hand then put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. It's a reprint. It's a very good reprint. It's a very good card in limited because it helps you dig. And it was used in standard too. Yeah. So we'll see where it goes. Oh my bushwag. It's a one green bushwag. One one trample. He's very high and mighty. But if you pay four, he gets plus three, plus three until in a turn. Really good in limited because this is a four four trample is good. He's kind of awesome if you mutate onto him too. Yeah, because that means any creature has four four trample. Yeah. Four plus three plus three can trample. Next up is the Auspicious Starix. It is a green and four for a six six elk beast. Whenever it mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards, where X is the high X is the number of times this card is mutated. Put those permanent cards onto the battlefield. It's, it's good. And it mutates for six. Yeah. It's uh really good. Yeah. It's super good. 
It doesn't care what number yeah. the permanents like their cost. It just numbers. It's the just amount a of permanent. Mutates. So yeah, you could hit really big things really easily, and you'd be like, hey, free dudes. It's just free cards constantly. Yeah, for six. So you're yeah. paying six mana for a six six. Or even then, you pay five and then mutate onto it too. Like yeah, that card's really. I would think standard playable if you get there. Limited. You, that card's a bomb. Yeah, for sure. This one, Barrier Breach. It's two and a one instant exile up to three target enchantments. Cycle two. I mean, <laughs> it's sideboard for sure. And sideboard standard just to be like, get rid of your gods or everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome in sideboard. Yeah. Next up, Bristling Boar. It is a four drop, four three boar that can't be blocked by more than one creature. And it is a really good reprint for limited. Yeah, especially when you put a menace counter on it. Yeah. It's unblockable, not fun. <laughs> Charge the Forever Beast, two and a green sorcery. As an additional cost to cast a spell, reveal a creature card from your hand. It deals damage equal to target creature or planeswalker equal to the revealed card's power. So, yeah, it can be good, can be bad. Yeah, it's a decent way for green to kill a thing. Yeah, so. especially in limited. Next up is Colossification. It is seven mana for an enchantment aura that enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature, Enchanted creature gets plus 20 plus 20. So we're gonna make a cat big and we're gonna kill you with it. Yep, a catfish thing. Brog! This uh, 2020 trampler, thank you, bye. Yeah. Well, you put it on a trample creature, is what I'm saying. Essence Symbiote. It's one in the green, two, two. Whenever the creature you control mutates, put a one one counter on that creature and, it gain, and you gain two life. Uh, definitely build around limited bomb and, and great standard if you play it. Because the, the mutate gets bigger and you gain two life, because why not? This is really strong. Yeah. Next up, Excavation Mole. It is a green and two for a 3-3 three, three Trample. It enters the battlefield. Put the top three cards in your library into your graveyard. It's a decent card for setup if you're doing stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, it's it's a limited card only. The next one is Exuberant Wolf Bear. Because look at that cute little wolf face on a big body, chunky body. It's three and a green, four, four. It's a wolf bear. Whenever <laughs> it attacks, you may change the base power and toughness to target human. You control to the power and toughness of the wolf bears until end of turn. It's really good. If you can get another human on the field, I think it's super awesome. And a 4-4 four, for four, 4 and limited is perfectly fine. Yeah. Next up is Spurter Lid. It is a green 2 for an, uh comes into play with two 1-1 counters on it. You pay two, remove a wall encounter from it, search target player searches their library for a basic land card and puts it into play tapped. It is a good reprint. It is limited really. Yeah. But it's it's okay. It's weird that it says target player, so you can be like your opponent or maybe in commander game be friendly, right? Flycatcher Griffin. It's four and a green antelope lizard. Three five. Enters the battlefield with your choice of a vigilance counter or a reach counter on it. That's it's decent, limited. Yeah, 3 5 reach is pretty awesome. Next up, fully grown. It is a green and two for an instant. Target creature gets plus three plus three until the end of turn. Put a trample counter on it. So it's pretty strong as a as a, a trick card. It's just like, hey, this dude's big and angry. Yep. So I'm gonna kill you now. Yep. Seems good. Limited, good. okay. Gym Gym Razor. It's three and a green, four four. Reach trample. Whenever it mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. And the mutate is two green and one. This dude's awesome. Yeah. The fact that it's a three drop four four reach trample technically is a uh, super good. And I would either play like a limited amount in standard main board and then a lot sideboard because not many of them are gonna have artifacts or enchantments. But we'll yeah. see what the meta yeah, says. That dude's that dude's real strong. Yeah, he is. He's good just in general because he's a four drop four four with reach trample. Yeah. And he has an extra ability. Yeah. Next is the Glowstone Recluse. It is a green and two for a two, three spider with mutate. Uh, you reach and it, whenever this card reach you mutates, put two one counters on it and it mutates for four. So it is a pretty decent spider for limited because yeah. it can be a good reach, a good flyer blocker and it just gets bigger. Yeah, real big. And it's one of the rare mutates, which is weird to say that it goes, it's higher in cost, but I mean, two counters don't matter a lot. Greater Sandworm. 5 and 2 green, 7-7, seven, seven. can be blocked by creatures 2 or less, and cycle for 2. It's good and limited. Yeah. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. 
Next up is the Honey Mammoth. It is six for a six-six elephant, and whenever it enters the battlefield, you gain four. As you can tell, green is doing what green is best. It's limited, like, beasts. Yeah, limited, big, stompy dudes. Yep. Hornbash, yeah, Hornbash Mentor. It's two and a green, three, three. So it enters the battlefield, put a trample counter on target non-human creature you control, and then pay three and tap, put a one, one counter on each creature with trample. Really, really good. It's a three, three for three that makes another dude with trample. Yeah. It's worth it. Pick it for limited. Yeah, that dude's awesome and limited. Yeah. Next is the Humble Naturalist. It is a green and one, uh, and it's a one three. Tap, add one man of any color, spin this man only to cast creature spells. If you play limited in three colors, I would play this card immediately. Oh yeah. The next one is Ivy Elemental. It's X and a green, zero, zero. And there's a battle full of X one one counters on it. It's a lot of times usually with green, like green and X to make the X big dude it's kind of a waste because you're losing a power for mana but with mutate who cares like, yeah <clears throat> make this pretty dude much. a little bit big and then mutate things on him next up is kogla the titan ape he is three green and three for a seven six he enters the battlefield he fights up to one target creature you don't control when he attacks destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls pay two return to target human you control to its owner's hand he gains indestructible until in turn. <laughs> yeah. So this card by himself plays Rampage. Yep. And that's pretty awesome. That's it. Yeah. Because he's like, I'm going to fight bury your thing. I'm going to attack and kill your other building. And then I'm going to eat a person and not die. Yeah. And as you can tell, of course, if you know about the whole Godzilla mashup with this set, the reason why they can't use King Kong as a name because they don't own it. Hasbro owns Godzilla, but they don't own King Kong, which is kind no, of weird. Yeah. Uh, leader of the Stampede, or lead the Stampede. It's two and a green sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal any creature cards among them. Reveal them, put them in your hand, put the rest of the bottom of your library. The fact that it gets all creature cards and put them in your hand is pretty decent. And I think it's really good and limited. Yeah, it's a very good reprint. It's limited bomb. Yeah. Next is Migration Path. It is a green and three. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them in the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Cycling two. It's an explosive vegetation with cycling, and that's awesome yeah not too bad this guy is one of the best mutate cards out there my my uh migration but my goratory there we go great horn three and a green three four so that's good mutate for two and a green whenever it mutates search your library for a basic land card and put it in the battlefield tapped and search your library if you want to ramp play this guy because you just Get all the lands you ever wanted. Yeah, you just keep mutating. He gets wild. Yeah, exactly. Next up is the Monstrous Step. It is a green and four. Target creature gets plus seven, plus seven until the new turn. Up to one other target creature blocks this turn if able. And cycling two. It's a decent card. I uh, don't like it because it costs five. But yeah. It, it's I'm, a usable card in limited, but that's about it. Because it's cycling. If it didn't have cycle, I would not play this card ever. Yeah. Moscow Gorak. It's two and a green, two, four beast. It has vigilance and it's good in the green, white vigilance deck, but that's okay and limited. Man, pretty much. Next is the Mythos of Brokus. He is two green and two for a sorcery. If blue and black was spent to cast this spell, search your library for a card, put that card in your graveyard, then shove your library, return up to two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. I think this might be the weakest of them, to be honest. Oh yeah, it definitely is. It it sets up a lot, yes, but it just seems kind of meh compared to the other one where it's like kill your permanent or or deal five damage to kill. Or get a free or, like a, a, an extra copy of a deal. Yeah, or everything. Yeah, basically all the ones kill something. Yeah. Uh, next one is plummet. It's a reprint every set ever. It's one in green instant destroy target creature with flying. Simple as that. It's good. Yeah. Next is Ram Through. It is a green and one instant. Target creature you control deals damage to deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. If the creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to the creature's control instead. This is amazing kill card for limited for green. Yeah. I've died uh, my creatures have died to this card too many times. Yeah. Next one is sudden uh, spinnerets. It's one green and it's instant. Target creature gets plus one plus three until end of turn. Put a reach counter on it, untap it. Very, very needed and limited. Because it will reach counter forever now. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. I like it. Uh, next up is Survivor's Bond. It is a green and one for choose one or both. 
Return target human creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Return target non-human card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah. For a two, it could be okay, but I don't know. I wouldn't really play it, to be honest. In limited, maybe. But you have to build around it. Thwart the enemy. Two and a green instant. Prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures your opponents control. I like cards like these because it's like a how gotcha card. Like a one up. I would play a one up in standard because they block, they all swing, you block awesomely, and then you just prevent all their damage. Yeah, done. Next is Titanoth Rex. He is two green and seven for an 11 11 trample. Whenever you cycle him, put a trample counter on target creature you control. I don't, I don't know. He's cool. If you get to that mana, then you yeah. should win the game, but. I don't know. I don't know. It he's is... decent. It, I Maybe a one of unlimited. Maybe. Yeah. Just because the trample counter is so useful. But it's still not that really good. Yeah. Next one is Vivian, Monster's Advocate. It's three and two green. So she has two static abilities, which is ridiculous. She comes with three loyalty, but you may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast a creature spells from the top of your library. That's silly. Plus one. Create a three three beast counter to or a creature token. Put your choice of a Vigilance, Reach, or Trample counter on it. Minus two. When you cast your next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost, put it on the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, she is super broken. Yeah. Like, limited, she's awesome. Standard, she's amazing. You just you just definitely build her on this card and you get to destroy people. Yeah. And why wouldn't you want to put a Vigilance counter on your 3 3 beast so you can swing in and attack and yeah. block at the same time? Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, very playable. Next up is Wilt. It is a green and one, destroy target artifact or enchantment with as an instant, and it's got cycling for two. So it's a decent... Naturalize. Naturalize. But better, because yeah. of cycling. Yeah. It's good and limited, good in sideboard. That's really about it. Yeah. With that, that'll be the end of green. We'll jump into the multicolor cards. Well... Now we're going in the multicolor. It's a uh, back for more, the very first one, and it's really good. So it's four in black and a green instant. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. When you do, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. So instant speed is where it's at, and the fact that you can end a turn, bring back the uh, four two black dude that kills a two two, and then you can block another dude, and then it's just or fight a guy, and it's just awesome. Yeah, dude, that card's pretty wild just because yeah. it's an instant. That's what makes it so strong, like yeah, you yeah. said. And it's 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 really good. It's really a gotcha for limited. Definitely yeah. play it. I, It could be built around in standard, but it's kind of mm -hmm. slow. Yeah. But limited, it is a bomb. Yeah. Uh, next up is the Boneyard Lurker. He is a black, green, and two for a 4-4 four, four Nightmare Beast. He's got Mutate, which a Mutate cost is two and a hybrid of blue, no, green? Bl no, black. Black, black, black green. green. Yeah, it's little. Sorry. Uh, if you cast this spell for its mutate cost, put it over under a non-human, and the mutate on top does all the things. Uh, whenever this card mutates, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Yep. So, this dude is really strong just because he gives you back things. In limited, that's really disgusting to be able to do that over and over and over and over. Yeah, exactly. Alright, the next one is Brokus, Apex of Forever. That's two black, green, and blue, a 6-6. Six, six. He has a mutate of two and then hybrid of Demir, so black blue green green uh trample you may cast brokus apex of forever from your graveyard using its mutate ability so that's why he has it and i mean forever forever yeah 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 he keeps coming back yeah he's super hard to kill yeah dude is definitely a bomb and limited bomb and limited i would play him in standard for sure if you play around the graveyard He's the same mana cost, of course, because that would be too broken if he was cost four for a 6 6 trample. Yeah. But the fact that you just keep bringing them back on the smaller late dudes that you can draw, it's amazing. Next up is Channeled Force. It is a red, blue, and two for an instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, discard X cards. Target player draws X. Channeled Force deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker. So you can discard some cards to shoot a thing. And then draw cards. It's it's pretty good in what it does. It's yeah. not like, in my opinion, I think it's a filler card than anything in limited. Yeah, for it's sure. good, but it's not like totally game changing. And if you build in standards, then you have to build well, like blue red. You think you're gonna have cards in your hand, but sometimes you don't, and then you just top deck this and lose because you can't do anything with it. Mm -hmm. 
All right, this guy is, Ch is Cheville, uh, Bane of Monsters. I think he's French for sure. Uh, black, green, 1-3. He's a human rogue death touch. But at the be beginning of your upkeep, if your opponent controls no permanents with a bounty counter on them, put a bounty counter on the target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. When a permanent an opponent controls with a bounty counter on it dies, you gain three life and draw a card. I really want to play this guy. I think with the whole, like, it's definitely against the meta deck because, you know, everyone's going to go mutate and such. And I think this guy is a bomb and limited because he has, it's a 1-3 death touch for two, just in general. And then he can draw you cards and game stuff. And then I think he's a build around and standing. Yeah, that dude definitely has potential just because he, like you said, you're just like bounty kind of killer. Yep, sweet. Done. I draw a card and I, it's a cantrip. My kill chip. Yeah. It's a cantrip. Next up is Death Oasis. It is a white, black, and green for an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two of your library into your graveyard. Then return a creature card with lesser convert mana cost than the creature that died from the graveyard to your hand. Pay one, sacrifice this, you gain life equal to the greatest convert mana cost among creatures you control. It's a weird card. Yeah. I don't know if it's worth playing. Limited, it's kind of cool just because you get free dudes. Yeah. But it's still kind of iffy. Like, I want to play test this. I wish it went into the fill instead. But I guess, it, what was it? Matter Reshaper and like that modern deck that destroyed everyone. That had yeah. to do with artifacts and stuff where you just kept repeating it and stuff. So I guess they didn't want that to happen again. But still, I think yeah. it would have been awesome if it was on the field next one is a uh, dire tactics it's a white and a black instant exile target creature okay if you don't control a human you lose life equal to that creature's toughness i say do it i play it all the time instantly yeah yes you may lose some life because you don't have a human but it's two mana to remove that dude forever yeah yeah like that dude's out of my game that pesky thing there's big creatures in this in the set for so <clears throat> limited uh, most of all black, all humans are mostly black white, so unlimited it would probably be easy for you not to lose life. But when they're like mutate, mutate, I have a 6-6 six, six or 8-8, eight, eight, and you're just like, just get rid of it. Yeah, no, I don't want it. Like, sorry. Uh, definitely standard playable, definitely yeah. limited. Oh, yeah. Next up is Eerie Ultimatum. Two white, three black, and two green. First ultimatum, ultimatums are back and they are amazing. Uh, it is a sorcery. Return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. This card is ridiculous in Commander. Yeah. In EDH Commander, this card is ridiculous because they all have different names. Yeah. Because it's one of us, so you're good. And for a limited, all these ultimatums are iffy and limited. If you can build around it, sure, but I would not go for it. Yeah. Like this one, a virgin ultimatum. Two black, three green, two blue. Sorcery, search your library up to three monocolored mono cards from different names and exile them. An opponent chooses one of those cards, shuffle that card in your library. You may cast the other cards without paying their mana costs, exile this. That card's wild. I like it. <laughs> yeah. This one's probably one of the better ones for limited, I think. Yeah. But the cost is still rough. Yeah. So you gotta make sure you can get there. But if you do, you get free three cards. Hey, cool. Next up, Frondland Felidar. He is a green, white, and two for a 3-5 cat beast with vigilance. Creatures you control with vigilance have pay one, tap target creature. Yeah. That dude is really good with all the white little dudes that have vigilance because this entire set has vigilance. Yeah, a lot of it. Like, all of the white creatures have vigilance and you're just like, hey, tap, 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 tap. And, and if they don't, then you can give them a counter that has vigilance. Yeah. And then end of your turn, before combat, tap all your dudes. Cool. My turn. Hit you. Let's do this again. Yeah, and this dude really is pretty strong for what he is because he's a 3-5 for 4. Yeah. Like, he can block and kill almost anything early. Yeah. And then just not care about the big dudes because he's like, cool, tap that dude down. Yeah, just for one. Ridiculous. I like him a lot, actually. Yeah, I like him a lot, too. Uh, next one is General Kudro of Granith. It's one white, black, 3-3 three, three human soldier. Other humans you control gets plus one, plus one. So we have a Lord here. And whenever him or another human enters the battlefield under your control, exile a target card from your opponent's graveyard, which can be pretty useful nowadays. And then two, sacrifice two humans, destroy target creature with power four or greater. So you have to get, you gotta be careful with the tokens because it would be really well for tokens to, to sacrifice that, but not many tokens are like human soldiers. They're just like soldiers or knights. Mm -hmm. So you gotta worry worry about that. 
Uh, he's he's definitely he's, good and limited if you're playing soldier or yeah, humans. But yeah, for sure. I don't know. He he seems more of a builder on card than anything for me in, in standard. Agreed. Uh, next is the General's Enforcer. Uh, he's a white and a black. Legendary humans you control have indestructible. Pay for, and that's two white, or two and a white and a black exile target card from the graveyard. If it was a creature card, create a 1 1 creature token. So this dude is very good in the build around as well, just because he goes with General Kudro and yeah. he's really, really strong with it. I agree. And I feel like I <clears throat> would like to see him in modern humans because all your, like, Thassas, they're indestructible now. What are you going to do about that? Pretty good. And Thalia's, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, Thalia. Sorry, <laughs> I was thinking of. That's what I meant, not Thassa's. Uh, <laughs> this one, Genesis Ultimatums. Two green, three blue, two red, sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest in your hand. Exile this. This is one of the stronger ones too. Because it's like, it's a permanent, put it in the field. Yeah, thanks. And yeah. then if it's not, if it spells, you don't waste anything. You just keep them in your hand to cast. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Good, great standard. Awesome and limited. Yeah. Next up is Iluna, the Apex of Wishes. It is two, a green, blue, and a red, or a 6-6 six, six beast elemental dinosaur. He's got flying and trample, and he's got mutate. His mutate cost is three, two blue, and a red-green hybrid, so one of the two colors. Uh, when this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent card. Put that card on the battlefield or into your hand. So this Jesus. dude is one of the best mutate cards in this set yeah. if you get him going because you just get free card advantage. Like literal free just, cards because it, it draws you a card regardless. Yeah. It either goes to your hand or into the field yeah. and you're just like, cool, get free cards. And don't ever worry about the mutate cost because then you can just pay five for this guy and then use like a two drop and a three drop mutate on him and just get free value. Yeah. And that's why they also... If it is a permanent card, you can put it in your hand, because if it's a mutate card, then you just put it on the dude. They don't want you to lose any value at all. How kind. The next one is Inspired Ultimatum. It's the one that's made fun of, of course, of all the memes, but it's two blue, three red, two white. Target player gains five life, hence why it's made fun of. <laughs> Inspired deals five damage to any target, and then you draw five cards. So... They really want Fiery Justice to be a card, and that's really what this is. Yeah, and the fact that... The white is just like, what do we do? Uh, you gain five life. I'm like, thanks. Yeah, thanks, thanks very much. That's what I wanted. Great. It's good. It's, yeah. Limited, it's, okay. it's really pretty good. Because you, you get a whole lot of advantage in limited. But otherwise, I don't really know about it. Yeah, exactly. Next up is Keenan, the Bonder Prodigy. It is a green and a blue for a 2-2 human druid. When you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. Yeah. Um, and then pay five and a blue and a green. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a non-human card from among them into the battlefield. Put the rest of the bottom in random order. Pretty much every card that I've read puts an extra thing into play. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. Very. Um, but yeah, this dude's pretty good just because he can help you get extra mana. Yeah. Like extra mana to help trigger his ability. That just puts things in the field. Yeah, and it says when you tap a non-land permanent for mana, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter what it is. You're just getting yeah. extra mana with it. Like if you have a magic rock or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, seems pretty good. Uh, the next one is one of my favorites. is Labyrinth Raptor. It's a black and a red nightmare dinosaur. It's a 2-2 with menace. And why? Because whenever a creature you control with menace becomes blocked, defending player sacrifices a creature to blocking it. That's super good. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's a... Black and a red, creatures you control with menace get plus one until in a turn. So uh, a flame breath for your whole team, if, if they all have menace. Yeah. And the fact that they lose a dude for you swinging, and then hopefully you pretty much kill the other one, then that's good. It's a two for one. That card is kind of ridiculous yeah. for what it does. A standard playable for sure, limited bomb. Yeah. yeah. Next is the Lord Dracus. He is one, a blue and a red for a lizard beast. He is a two, three with mutate. Mm -hmm. His mutate is hybrid red, hy or hybrid red blue, hybrid red blue. Yep. And when this card mutates, return target instant sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. <laughs> That's really not that bad in, oh. in the grand scheme of things, because you can just keep mutating and get back that ultimatum if you have it, just yeah. to be like cheeky and limited. 
Exactly. Or you can get back any kind of kill spell or whatever. And that's what makes it really strong. Is you're just like, cool, get back the shock, take die, bow. Yeah. Burn, kill, everything. Yes. Super good. Limited, this card is really good just because its mutate cost is so little, you get to abuse it. Yeah, and I want to see it in standard for sure. All right, next one is Narset of the Ancient Way. It's a one blue foot and a white. Oh, sorry, I can read it behind her foot. It's a red for sure. It's a four level two planeswalker. Uh, plus one, you gain two life, add blue, red, or white, spend mana only to cast a non-creature spell. Then you minus two. Draw a card, then you may discard a card. When you discard a non-land card this way, uh, Narset deals damage equal to the card's commander mana cost to target creature or planeswalker, which is super strong because that just makes it if you're a late game player and you draw something that costs five or six and you're just like, ah, kill it, kill something. And then minus six, you get an emblem with whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this emblem get, deals two damage to any target. So it's as cute, it's trying to be as cute as good old Ral is, Ral Zeret, but it's still good. Yeah. This is still good. It is still very good for what it does. Limited it is a bomb because you gain life and you get free mana. Yeah. Regardless that it's only on non-creatures, you still get free mana. And it can protect itself, of course. And the ultimate's not that far. It's yeah. only two, like three turns, technically. So yeah, pretty good. Next up is the Necro Panther. He is white, black, and one for a 3-3 Cat Nightmare. And he's got Mutate as well for hybrid white, black, hybrid white, black, and two. When this creature mutates, return target creature card with cover mana costs three or less than the graveyard to the battlefield. This dude is insane for mutate. Yep. Limited bomb because yeah. he brings back any little dude. And regardless of how big or little it is in limited, it's really, really good because it, it's an extra dude to swing. It's extra dudes. Yep. The next one is a Nethrai, Apex of Death. It's two white, black, and a green. It's a 5 5 cat nightmare beast. And he has Mutate as well, which is a 4 and a Slesnia hybrid, black, black, so 7. You might not be casting it for that for sure. But as Death Touch Lifelink, whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total cost 10 or less. Wow, power 10 or less from your graveyard to the field. That's why he's so good. Yeah, that's why. But that's why Mutate's so busted, because you don't need to cast this Mutate to get that ability. Yeah. And also, you don't have to follow color schemes on this to make it that way, because you yeah. can play like, you can mutate and bring back other dudes that are not that color. Yeah. Which, with this card, one of the best cards I've seen so far is bringing back Spark Doubles, because they have zero power, so you get a free extra big dude. Yeah. And you're like, ah, I have a 6-6, six, six. I want another one. And you get two of them. Yeah, yeah. If you have two of them in the yard because they have zero power and then they don't trigger until they come into play. And it's kind of silly. And it's 10 or less power. That, that that can be a lot of dudes. Yeah. The one I've seen so far is you bring back the little Nessian boars that are like 7-7 seven, seven Vigilance Trampled dudes that didn't see play yeah. forever. Yeah. And then like a Spark Double and then something that gives them all haste. And you're just like, ah, I died. Swing. And oh. it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. It's super ridiculous. Anyways, digress. That dude, great in all formats. In all formats. Next up is Offspring's Revenge. It is a red, white, a black, and two for an enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, exile target red, white, or black creature card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 1-1. One, one. It gains haste until the end of turn. Or until your next turn. <laughs> I really like this card a lot in Limited, for sure. Yeah. It could be built around pretty well in standard if you did it right, just because you get to be like, hey, little dude, or that, that dude I like, I'm make another one real quick. Yeah, utility creatures. Like, all these utility creatures that have any of the play with it, effects, done. Do it. Yeah. Or you can extra do mutate dudes and be like, hey, cool, mutate. Yeah. I'm like, bring put back this dude little... into play and then mutate onto him. Yeah. Blow. And I did uh, do a limited game of this deck with uh, all the creatures that say when you draw a card, or do when you cycle a card... So all their abilities still got to happen when I when they were one ones. <laughs> so it was really good. Yeah, it's pretty silly. Limited, it's really cool because it just helps you give you it gives you dudes yeah. and anything in limited that makes tokens, regardless of what it costs, is amazing. Exactly. And standard, it can be built around. Now this next one is busted. Parcel beast, two blue and a green, but that's not what it cost. <clears throat> the mutate cost is a green and a blue, for a two four. 
Pay one, tap, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it in the battlefield. If you don't, it's in your hand. Okay. So for two, you get a creature that can block whatever and then tap to ramp you or draw you a card. Seems solid. Yeah, dude is pretty solid. Very, very good. Limited, he is really good because he's a 2-4, so he blocks yeah. everything except for their bombs. And there's enough one-drop creatures that aren't human that you can just like turn to have this. Thanks. Yeah. Next up is the Primal Empathy. It is a one and a green and a blue. Enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Draw a card if you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield. Otherwise, put a one one counter on target creature or on a creature you control. I like this card just for what it does. In limited, it's really cool because yeah. it can help you tick up quicker. Standard, it's too slow in my opinion because you're having to wait like six turns or three turns or however long. Yeah. But it could be really useful. I want to build it in standard for sure. I think it's a sleeper hit, but it, like Kevin said, it is kind of slow because you have to wait till your upkeep. There's no more of this end of in step stuff anymore. Yeah. But yeah, uh, limited. It's a bomb for sure. All right, Quartzwood Crusher, Crasher. It's two, two red and a green, so it costs five for a six-six Trampler. Dinosaur Beast. Whenever one or more creatures control with Trample, deal combat damage to. Target player, create an XX green dinosaur beast creature with trample, where X is the amount of damage those creatures dealt to this player. Extremely busted. Standard, limited, especially unlimited. Yeah. Yeah, that dude in limited, you should be winning the game pretty hard because yeah. you just get free dudes. This is free dudes all the time. And they don't go away, they're just there. You're yeah. just like, I get free dudes. Sweet. I don't care it's a 2 2. That's a free 2 2. Yeah. So they block, you deal 2 damage to them, right? You get a 2 2 thing with trample. Are they going to keep blocking your big dude or the smaller one? If not, the smaller one makes other little tutus. Or you just mutate onto the trample dude and you're like, I'm exactly. cool, I have trample and mutate. Thanks. Exactly. Good old mutate. Yeah. Neat. Next up is the Regal Leosaur. He is a red-white for a 2-2 two -two dinosaur cat. And he's got mutate for three, which is hybrid white-red, hybrid white-red, and one. Whenever this creature mutates, other creatures you control get plus two, plus one. This is one of the best cards, I think, for that kind of mechanic because it's in play. Yeah. You don't waste your mana to do it, and you get it. Like, if you're using it that turn, you still get to make your 2-2 dude or mutate onto something and get a 2-2, and you get that ability. Yeah. So it's not like the other wasted pump spells like that because this is continuous that you can do it any time. Exactly. I like it for that. I'm not going to say it's going to change the game completely because it doesn't it's not like game breaking but limited it is a good card yeah agreed <laughs> next up is real the everwise it's one blue and a red zero three human wizard but gets plus one for each instant sorcery card in your graveyard which was good like runes pike rune caster pike or whatever back in the day but whenever you discard one or more cards for the first time each turn you draw that many cards so when you cycle you draw an extra card pretty much that's pretty neat yeah super good or if you will of fortune you just <laughs> draw extra cards in seven you know yeah, or whatever. Yeah, sweet wheel of fortune i draw 14 bet <laughs> right exactly done uh i like this one. yeah it's pretty good you got to build around it in standard yeah but it can be really strong it's a really good just beater too because if you have a lot of sorceries and instants you're like hey i mean crackling drake was good but this thing's not as good because it doesn't have flying yeah but exactly but it's okay it's still good Next up, Ruinous Ultimatum. Two red, two black, and three white. We're killing the world. Yep. Destroy all non-land permanents your opponents control. The simplest ultimatum. Yeah. Your board, gone. You get lands, but that's it. Yeah. And I still get to have my stuff. Yeah. Thank you. So limited bomb. You limited destroying their and board. And I think Mardu control can be really good with that. All right. Save Thundermane. Uh, it's a red and white three, two. It's Elemental Cat. Whenever you cycle a card, you pay two. If you do, it deals two damage to target creature or ga and you gain two life. So, uh, this guy is going to be standard. Like, people, I already see everyone trying to make a deck out of this guy because he's powerful. It reminds me of a Searing Meditation where you ever gain two life, you pay two, and then you deal two damage. Yeah, it's kind of my it's my kind of card. Yeah, it, it reminds me back in the day of uh, Searing Rift with Astral Slide where you're just like, ah, cycle, take two. Blow! Yeah, enjoy that. Yeah. That's what it is. I like it. Card's good. Build around. It's ridiculous. And yeah. you build around it. And it's a 3-2 two for 2, which is stupid. Yeah. Next up is the Skull Prophet. Black and a green for a 3-1 human druid. You tap at a black or a green. 
Tap, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. So it can help set up your board however you want for your graveyard to do shenanigans with, or mana ramp shoot. It's pretty strong. It's limited goodness. I don't really see it doing a lot in standard, but yeah. it is limited. Unless you just build a full on graveyard deck, yeah. but still. Next one is Skycat Sovereign. It's a white and a blue 1-1 one, one flying. It gets plus one, plus one for each other creature you control with flying. So it's a reverse lord. And it's a two, so what do we want? A peasant, a king, a noble? I don't know what that would be. <laughs> Maybe a king. It's a two white and a blue. Create a 1-1 one, one white cat bird creature token with flying. And it's very powerful. Extremely, extremely powerful. Yeah, you just keep making dudes. That's all. Again, limited bomb because it makes tokens. Yeah. And these tokens fly, so you're like, I get to win the game easier. And then it gets bigger whenever you make those tokens, so pay four for a 1-1 one, one counter. Yeah, pretty bet. much. Next up is Slither Wisp. It is a blue, two, black for a elemental nightmare with flash. Whenever you cast another spell that has flash, you draw a card and each opponent loses one life. I like it. So in a kind of flash deck, you're just like, hey, cool, you die. Yeah. The right build around, that card is going to be really good in standard because it's cheap enough that it can still work. Yeah. And limited, it's okay, but it's not like in, it's, it's not like amazing and limited. Like I did make a flash deck and limited it is very hard to build around because there's flash cards, but they don't all usually work with each other. Yeah. But I was able to go like what six and three or whatever. I went pretty well with it. Now this one, snap decks. Apex of the Hunt. It's one black, white, red. It's a 3-5. Dinosaur Cat Nightmare. <laughs> so it has a mutate cost of two high root of Rakdos, so black or red, or white, white. It has double strike. And whenever this creature mutates, it deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls, and you gain four life. Uh, I want to see this card go. I will go at it. Yeah, this card is bonkers. Yeah. If you get this mutated, like the big legendary ones, if you get them mutated, I, you should be winning that game. Yeah. Like, that's just how that should be. Because they are all that strong to do silly shenanigans. This one literally shoots them for four. Or shoots a creature or planeswalker yeah. for four. And you gain four life. Yeah. You're killing the board and you get a, a big dude. You're, you're swinging... You're killing the dude so you can swing in for a double strike, pretty much. Yeah. Build around standard for sure. Yeah. Next is Song of Creation. It is one, a green, blue, and red. For an enchantment, you play an additional land on each turn. Whenever you cast a spell, draw two cards. The beginning of your end step, discard your hand. Yes, please. Yeah. I I'll, Sure. I'll take it all day. I don't care. Oh, I cast a spell, I draw two cards? Great. And then I gotta discard cards? Like, that's fine. Because you get to play all of them. Because it plays an additional land, and you get to do a whole bunch of extra stuff. Yeah, and play it with the uh, Everwise Witch. You draw the cards that you discard. Yeah, because it she doesn't require you to cycle, so you just get extra value. Yeah, you just get to keep your cards, just new ones. Just don't, just don't deck yourself. That's yeah. all. That's all we ask. Be careful playing this card, yeah, but be very careful. Standard is going to be really good build around card. Oh yeah, limited, very fun. It should win you the game, pretty much. Next, or this one's you. Yeah, this is me. Sprite Dragon. It's a blue and a red one one flying haste. I like those stats already, but. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Sprite Dragon. I feel like this should be a rare, but it's really good. Yeah. It's super good. You opt. It's bigger. You counter anything. It's bigger. It has haste. Yeah. Yeah. That's what makes it so ridiculous, because it has haste. Alright. This card's super good. I think it's an A-plus in all formats, I think. Mm-hmm. Next up is the Titan's Nest. It is one, a black, green, and blue for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. Exile card from your graveyard, add a waste. Spend this mana only to cast a colored spell with X in its mana cost. Without X in its mana Without X in its mana cost. So this card could be really good. It kind of is mana ramp in a weird way, but it, it definitely could be pretty strong in what it does. It I mean, kind of helps you cycle through your deck so you know what you're drawing. Exactly. And it's endless with this. So exile a card from your graveyard. You can keep on doing it. Yeah. So therefore you can you can mana ramp really really quick. And it's a card. Yeah. There's no stipulation. No creature card. No nothing. You're just like, remove that card. Get a mana. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. That's why it says without X because you don't want to do Hydra's Crisis for everything. Yeah, stupid. Card. Standard, build around, awesome. Yep. Next one is Trumpeting Gnar. 
It's one green and a blue, three, three, beast. Whenever this creature mutates, put, create a three, three green beast to creature token. And it has a mutate cost of three and a hybrid of Simic, two of them, so it costs five altogether. This guy gets out of hand really quick and a very limited bomb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's insane. Next up, Vadrock, the Apex of Thunder. It is a blue, red, and one. Blue, red, and white. Yeah. For a 3-3 flying first strike. Whenever this card mutates, you may cast and target non-creature card from your graveyard. Without paying its cost, it's three or less. And it mutates for a red, red, a hybrid of Azorius, and one. So, mutating with this, you get free spells. It's pretty good. Yeah. Free dudes. Yeah. Free, free spells are free spells. Yeah. Love it. Whirlwind of Thought. It's one blue, red, white enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you draw a card. Hey, why well, neat. Thanks, Jessica Controls and everything. It's just too good. Yeah, it's it's pretty strong. Yeah. Next up, Winota, the Joiner of Forces. She is two, a red, and a white for a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever a non-human creature you control attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You may put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attack. It gains indestructible until the end of turn. Put the rest of the cards in the bottom of your library in random order. Oof. This card is cool, but it feels like a trap. Very much so. Because you have to have a lot of stipulations for it to work right, and that's kind of meh. Yeah. It's a cool idea, and I like the way it works, but I just don't see it being viable. And I like to build silly cards like this, and I'm just like, I don't know if I can make that work. Yeah, because you have to have humans and non-humans to play. Yeah. And... Who knows how good that's going to be, you know? And it costs 4 and a 4-4, four, four, and it doesn't have haste. Wait, let's see. Does it have to attack when... No, whenever... So, it can happen the first time you play her. That's kind of cool, but you have to have... Uh, it's I don't know. It's, it's a trap. We have to explain that part for sure. It's a trap. Actually, this gets a lot better now that I think about it, because that dude doesn't go away. You just get that dude. Yeah, you get that dude tapped and attacking. That's pretty good, and but it doesn't just go away. Yeah, but how good does that human have to be to just plop them down? I mean, free dudes are free dudes. Free dudes are free dudes. Limited, this card's good. Yeah. You're going to have all the... So, limited, definitely use this card. Yeah. I, I, well, let's build around it. Let's build that deck. We'll see what happens. Uh, Zenith Flare. It's two red and a white instant. Deals X damage to any target and you gain X life, where X is the number of cards with cycling ability in your graveyard. Uh, yes, please. Uh, standard... Beat that ass and limited just win. Yeah, no, this card is insane and standard because I've seen a deck with it where you're just like, I uh, you take seven because I have seven cards. Yeah, just for four. Because it doesn't have to do anything. It just has to have a cycling in your graveyard. You're just <laughs> like, oh, that card that I got rid of earlier, I don't care. And when are you not going to if you play red and white nowadays? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah, super good. All right, next up, we're into the hybrid cards. First up is the Alert Heed Bonder. He is one and two Selesnia hybrid. He is a 2-4 with Vigilance. At the beginning of your instep, you gain one life for each creature you control with Vigilance. Limited, super annoying to play against. Yeah, limited, pretty good. Not bomb, but just he'll get out of control pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. Can we talk about Xena Flare again? Because, like, if you just mill cards in your deck, you can do at least really quick to 20 damage for four, right? Yeah, I know. Like, yeah, that's what that deck is. It's just, just got to have cycling. That's all it is. <laughs> so, anyways, all right. Cunning Knight Bonder. It's a two hybrid of Demir. So blue red or blue black, blue black. It's two two flash. Spells with flash you cost cast cost one less to cast and cannot be counted. So really good. Standard build around limited, pretty fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Next is Fiend Artisan. It is two Golgari hybrid for a one one nightmare. It gets plus one plus one for each creature card in your graveyard, and you can pay a black or green and X. Sacrifice another creature, search your library for a creature card with X or less, put it in the battlefield, then shelf your library. This dude's really strong for what he does. Yes. He automatically gets bigger just by dudes in your yard. And he fuels that by sacrificing the dude to get a new dude. Yep. And you get that new dude and he has activate triggers or enter triggers and all kinds of other shenanigans. This dude's just very strong for being two mana. Yeah. Yes, it can be killed off quickly early, but otherwise it just gets insanely out of out of hand i love it that the fact that it's, it doesn't the creature that you sacrifice does not matter at all it's how much mana you put into it which is amazing because if you just like well i top decked a one drop play the one drop then you use the rest of your mana to get your big dude 
Like yeah. whatever dude you want, you put it into play. Mm-hmm. And this guy is, I think, is insanely. I wouldn't say broken, but I think he's the best, one of the best cards. Yeah, he is very, very strong. Like I wouldn't, yeah. Standard playable, limited bomb, because you go get your other bomb. Like this guy was a Gruda, Doom of Depths. He is destroyed standard. It's a four, uh, two split hybrids of Demir, so blue, black, blue, black, six, six. Legendary creature, but companion. Your starting deck contains only cards with converted mana costs, so. Yeah, only even. Even, thank you. I knew I missed a word there. So, okay, that's not that hard. But, enters the battlefield. Each player puts the top four cards of the library into their graveyard. Put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under your control. Because what they do is they play this, and then they play Thassa, and then they bounce again, and then go get one of your dudes. Or, your, or another powerful dude. Yeah, and so you know about Companion. It is a extra card that stays in your sideboard. Yeah. It just that's where it goes, and it can be played at any time. You can play that card, kind of like in Commander can. Yeah. But it has stipulations on your first game. Your first game has to match these stipulations for it to be playable. Yeah. Or just to be used, and that one is even cards. The next one is Gigantha the Wellspring, which is probably my favorite one because I love silly cards like this. Yes. It is a Gruul hybrid and four for an elemental elk that is all about the rainbow. And it's super easy to cast. That's yeah. the best part. Companion. No card in your starting deck has more than one color of the same mana symbol. <laughs> so I can't play any ultimatums, but that I, that's okay. okay. I'll deal with he, it. He can do this. Uh, and then it's a 5-5, five, five, and it taps, adds one of each color. This mana can, can't be spent to pay generic mana. So it's got stipulations on it but you just get to tap add five mana and play a div visit and draw like <laughs> seven cards and not care yeah, exactly like i don't see what's wrong with this card but i like all kinds of jank cards like this i'm all about it i'm gonna play some rainbow elk oh my god rainbow rainmaker kevin here he'll yeah. be able to do it dude i'll do it don't think i won't the only thing that irks me is that's a five five i, I want to swing with this guy so bad yeah but you can also play like two or three things with this guy. So, I don't know. He's awesome. He is pretty awesome. Definitely limited cool, if you have it. Yeah. And standard build around, for sure. All right, Jubilant, or Jubilant, <clears throat> Sky Bonder. It's one and two Azorius hybrids. Uh, two, two flying. Creatures you control with flying have spells your opponents cast. The target of the spell costs two more to cast. And that's very powerful, especially if you just play blue white flyers like back in the day and it's super good mm -hmm. like don't target my stuff thanks and i fly over you next up is kahira the orphan guard it is one and two celestia hybrid for three two companion and its companion is each creature card in your starting deck is a cat elemental nightmare dinosaur or beast card simple enough neat yeah uh and it's got vigilance each other creature you control that is one of those types gets plus one plus one and hatch vigilance. Yeah. Uh, limited all of, bomb. Yeah, limited bomb. All of these companions are build around. That's literally their point. Yeah. So I mean, they're gonna be useful in any kind of format you want to build them in. But they just have stipulations. And it costs three and it gives them all vigilance and it's just super good. Yeah, that guy is really strong, and if you get him in limited with all the cards to do it, then you just like cool. Yeah, I had a band deck. Where I killed everyone with a Nightmare Squirrel that was flying 3-3 Vigilance. Yeah. Dude seems strong. He's pretty good. Alright, this guy. Kruga of the... What? The Macro Sage. Thanks, Macro Sage. It's three and two Simic hybrids by four. Dinosaur Hippo. He has a companion. Uh, your starting deck contains only cards with Converter Man. costs three or greater and land cards. That's one of the harder companion ones to do in Standard, but... We can do it. When Karuga enters the battlefield, draw a card for each other permanent you control with converted man costs three or greater. Limited awesomeness, for sure. Standard Definitely. build around. Yeah. Next up is Lurus of the Dream Den. It is one and two Orzov hybrid for a three two nightmare cat. Each permanent card in your starting deck has converted mana cost two or less. It's got lifelink. During each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. This cat, from what I've understand, is broken modern pretty hard. Yeah. Because you get to play Death Shadows and not care. Yeah. You're like, cool, I'll pay one, get a 13-13. Bet. 
and it's literally the only other deck I've played in standard against in standard. Like it's this one or the Nightmare Kraken, because they're just like everything's two drop. All right, we're gonna do Witch's Oven, and just do all the shenanigans through the graveyard all the time. Yeah, I mean it's that's dangerous. It's really strong because it's only three drops, so you can just be like, hey, cool, turn three, I get to play this and not care anymore. Yeah, and it's two or less permanent cards that you can cast. So dead weight, just kill all the small aggro creatures over and over. Like it's just pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one is uh, Lutri, the Spell Chaser. It's one and two, is it hybrids for a three, two companion? It's companion cost. Oh, it's also an elemental otter. Pretty damn cute. So each long line card in your starting deck has to have a different name. So it's busted and or it's broken in commander or mm -hmm. banned already. I, I think it got banned in commander already. Which is understa understandable. Limited, it's a bomb. I went undefeated with this guy and then in a blue red deck. Or no, a black red deck. Because I got to kill everything twice. Yeah. And then flash, of course. So, yeah, it has flash. Cool. Enters the battlefield. If you cast it, copy target instant or sorcery spell you can control. You may choose new targets for that copy. So one time I was able to steal a dude and then flash this guy in to copy that spell to steal another dude and swing for game. It's That's pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah, Little Otter is real good. Yeah, real, real good. Definitely a build around card. Next up, Obosh, the Prey Piercer. He is three and two Rakdos hybrid for a three, five Hellion Horror. Companion, your starting deck contains only cards with odd numbers and land cards. If your source you control with an odd convert mana cost would deal damage to a permanent or player, it does double that damage to that permanent or player instead. Yeah. It makes lightning bolts six for one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. That yeah. is neat. Because it says source you control, so it doesn't matter what burn spells or whatever you have. Yeah, and lightning bolts an odd card, so you're like, cool, thanks. Yeah, it's very powerful and limited. Extremely. And then standard, it's awesome. Yeah, definitely building on standard, limited, super strong. Yeah. The next one is Proud Wild Bonder. It's two and two uh, gruel, yeah, gruel uh, charms. It's four and a three, it's not a charm, it's a mana symbol. I just want to say charm after gruel. That's one of the most popular ones, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gruel Charms. Anyways, it's a Human Warrior Trample. Creatures you control with Trample have, you may have this creature assign its combat damage as though it wasn't blocked. So yeah. 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 We're gonna make a Lord with Trample that just is like, hey, my Trample dudes are bigger. Mainly because you don't block it. Yeah, you, you block with that 2-2, two, two, too bad. All the damage still goes through, so suck it. Yeah, thanks. Dude is really strong in a build around trample deck. Yeah. And he's really good and limited because he's a 4-3 trample for four. Yeah. All, although, don't make the mistake if they block with a death to touch creature just to not kill that creature. Because I've played against this guy where I've killed their wild bonder while having all my dudes alive because they were like, I'll just assign damage to them. Like, no. Kill the creatures when need be, but if not, then you just win. Mm-hmm. Tip. Next up, Sonorous Howlbonder. He is a 1 and 2 Rakdos hybrid for a 2 2 human warrior. Yep. He's got Menace. Each other creature you control with Menace can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. So we're making a Lord for Menace as well to be like, hey, don't block. Yeah, don't. Don't. Don't block. You gotta block with three dudes. And if you pair this dude with the little raptor, then yeah. they have to lose one of those three dudes. The dinosaur nightmare or whatever it is. Yeah. It's just really good. Super good. Next one is Umori, the Collector. It's two and then two uh, Golgari hybrid costs for a 4 5 for 4, which is awesome. Companion. Each non lane card in your starting deck shares a card type. So basically, it has to be all creatures. All creatures, pretty much, if you want to play this guy with it. Or all spells, if you want all instances. As the ooze enters the battlefield, choose a card type. And spells you cast of chosen type cost one less to cast. Um, as a companion, he sucks unless you do limited and have all all creatures, but then it's like you need your kill spells or trick spells. But just him in like a deck is really good. Yeah, because he still gets to do his inner triggers and help you dudes out, but companion, he's kind of weird. Yeah, exactly. Next up, Yorian the Sky Nomad. It is three and two Azorius for a four five bird serpent. Its companion is your starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. It's got flying. 
Yep. It is a battlefield. Exile any number of other non-land permanents you own and control. Return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of the next instep. This dude's really strong just because he can blink out lots of things. Yeah. And his his drawback is 20 more cards. Yeah. Okay, I'll just play a whole bunch of extra draw spells and not care. Yeah. Which in somehow in limited, or not limited, in uh, arena, that no one gets screwed over by this. I don't know how. Yeah, this card is pretty good for yeah. what it does. Standard build around for sure. Limited, it could be really good. Yeah, could be fun. The next one is uh, Zerda, the Dawn Waker. It's one and two Boros hybrid for three, three. Companion, each permanent card in your starting deck has to, be, has to have an activated ability. So it just has to have something you pay and tap, or just pay. Abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. This effect can only reduce the mana cost uh, to less than one mana. So it has, no matter what it is, if it's two, then it goes to one, basically. Yeah. This one, one tap target creature can't block this turn. So it's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Limited, it's okay. But in standard, I don't care for it. It seems cool. Yeah. I like the idea of it, but it's kind of meant otherwise. Right. Yeah, pretty much. Most activated abilities cost two and tap. Yeah. There's nothing that, well, I guess if you play him, maybe and he would be a good, what, command, commander? He'd be a fun commander helper. Yeah. You, you still have to activate all your, you still have to play everything with an activate, but it'd be pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, with that, we'll delve into the artifacts. And the first one we got is the Crystalline Giant. It is three for a three, three giant. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose a kind of counter at random that Crystalline Giant doesn't have from a monk. Flying, first strike, death touch, <laughs> hexproof, lifelink, menace, reach, trample, vigilance, plus one, plus one. Put a counter on of that kind on him. This dude in limited is a bomb. Yes, extremely. Because he gets crazy quickly. Because first one, you're probably just like hexproof or whatever oh, you hope. have. I hope the first one's hexproof. It's like hexproof, cool. Then one one, and then it just gets insane after that. I mean, he does have to go off of what else you have, so that is his drawback. Yeah. But guess what? It's he's not a, that much of a drawback. He's a great mutate target <coughs> too. <laughs> yeah, he is a giant, so he just mutates into everything. <laughs> this guy is busted, and I would play him standard immediately as well. Yeah. God, this guy. All right, uh, Adapta Crystal. It's a three-drop artifact. Tap add Abzan. White, black, green, and then you can cycle for two. Just good and limited. That's it. Seems good. Yep. Next up is the Ketria Crystal. It is three for a uh, tap, add a green, blue, or red, and cycles for two. They they make a big bunch of these crystals, and they're good and limited. Yeah, really good. All right, the Ozolith. It's a one-drop legendary artifact. Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith. And then at the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you may move all counters from Ozolith onto target creature. <laughs> That's I think neat. With the Crystallized Giants, this would be super cute. Because if they kill, somehow board wipe it when it has all those counters and it goes all in here. And then you just move it to another creature that you play. I don't know. I, I really like this yeah. artifact a lot. I think this card's really good in standard building around just because you can... You can do a lot of shenanigans with it. Yeah. And you'd be like, hey, this dude gets all these counters. Wow. Yeah. This card also, now that I think about it, this card makes Ravager so much more stupid. Yeah. So much more stupid. Ravager. Yeah. Like the whole Ravager deck's just like, I'm um, even dumber. Because this is one mana, an artifact, and modular just adds up. Exactly. Just like, it's like, yeah, it's modular with extra steps, but it's still really good. <laughs> Gross. And it's a one drop. That's the, the perfect amount of mana I would pay for this type of yeah. effect, for sure. Next up is the Rogrin Crystal. It is three for an, uh, one of the artifacts that adds a blue, red, or a white, and it cycles for two. Yep, it's pretty good. Next one is Savai Crystal. Three drop, it or does Mardu, so red, white, and black, and cycles for two. And next up is the Sleeper Dart. It is two for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, dry card. Tap, sacrifice, sleeper, dart, target creature, does not untap, during the controller's next untap step. That card is actually kind of busted and limited. Yeah, like, it really is. That card seems real strong and limited because it sits in play, it draws you a card, Yeah. and then you can be like, ah, I forced you to not do something. That, Thanks. That dude stays tapped. Thanks. Oh, you played a big mutate guy and hit me one time? Not again. Yeah, no, no thanks. The next one is Springjaw Trap. 
It's a one drop flash artifact, and then you pay four, tap, sacrifice it, it deals four damage to any target. Or three damage to any target. I don't know if I said four or not. But yeah, it's okay. It's decent and limited for sure. Yeah. Limited seems good. Yeah. Next up is the Zagath crystal. It is three for a uh, black, blue, or green, and it cycles for two. Simple as that. Pretty good. All right, we'll get into the lands, which are pretty simple. We have tri lands, which is crazy, but first we gotta get into the basic tap ones. Bloodfill Caves, this is a black red uh, cave that draws you, uh, gains you a life. Yep. Next is the Blossoming Sands, which is the white green that gains you a life. Yep. It comes in tap. Uh, Bonders Enclave, it's a land, it's a colorless land, a wasteland pretty much. Adds a waste, but you can pay three, tap, draw a card. Activate this ability only if you control a creature with power four or greater. I really dig this card. I I get it in draft every time because creatures get wild. And for you to just be like, and to turn, pay three, draw a card. Thanks. Yeah, seems pretty good. Really good. Uh, next up is the Dismal Backwater, which is a blue-black gain to life and comes in play tapped. It's another one of those lands. Yep. They're, they're going to be in there for limited. That's what they're for. They're not like great, but they do help. The next one is Evolving Walls, returning in its all-star debut. The art is super good. Mm -hmm. uh, tap, sacrifice, Evolving Walls, search your deck for a basic land type and put it into play tapped. Simple as that. And then we get into the new busted lanes that kind of blow my mind away. Yeah. It is an Indantha Triome. It is a land that adds a white, a black, or a green, comes into play tapped, and it cycles for three. Yeah. Already good enough. Then it has the ability to be a plains, a swamp, and a forest, or Ooh, whatever yeah. they come to. Yeah. What that means for that is you could, if you have fetch lands in old magic, you get to go search for these, or any card that says search for a plane, search for a swamp, yeah. search for whatever. You get to go get these and be like, cool, thanks. Because almost all of those cards say tap, put that dude into play tapped, put that land into play tapped. Yeah. So you're like, cool, this card automatically already comes into play tapped. I just get a free triple land instead of one. Exactly. So good. And if you're flooding, then you can pay three to draw a card. It's really good. These things are really good. And I hope they bring the White Knight back that costs two. And if they control more lands you do, you go get planes. And then you just get a tri lane. Weathered Wayfair would be broken. Oh, yeah. The next one is Jungle Hollow. It's basically the tapped gain of life Golgari land. So it taps for black or green. And Ketria Triome, which is the blue, green, red one of the tri triple lands. And it's a forest island of Mountain. Yep. The next one is Rugen Triome. It is uh, the tri-land of uh, blue, black, and white, and it's an island, mountain, plains. Blue, red, and white. Oh, blue, red. Yeah, I said black, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, blue, red, and white. Sorry. It's still tri-land. Do what it does. Yep. Uh, next is the rugged highlands, which is the gruel tapped land, and it gains your life. Simple as that. And then the Savai tri Triome. It's a mountain, plain, swamp. Really good. Scoured Barrens is the white, black, double land that comes in tapped and gains a life. It's good. And then Swiftwater Cliffs is the blue, there isn't one, the blue red that gains your life. Thornward Falls, blue green, gains your life. Tapped. Yeah, they did all of them, huh? Yeah. Uh, Tranquil Cove, it's the blue white one that gains your life. And Windscarred Crag is the red white one that gains your life and does the same. And uh, the finest, the final one is a Zagroth Triome. It has Swamp, Forest, Island, which is pretty cool. Those look cool. All of them are pretty. Dude, they look amazing. This set overall looks amazing. I, from what I understand of this, I've not played it myself, so I don't know just yet, but from what I understand, this set is the best set in limited format. Yeah. Like, in a long, long time. It has been extremely fun. I've done nothing but draft, at least every day, maybe twice a day on Arena. And with the people draft now that's in Arena, it just makes it so, more, so awesome. Yeah. This is so great. Sometimes you're like, Arena, the computer's not this bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I can draft against humans? Thank you. Yeah. I can play free forever now. Yeah, but this set does look really fun. I love this set. This is one of my old... My roommate told me that this set is more of a, a Kevin set than anything because it's just got big dumb creatures that do silly things. Yeah. And I love big dumb creatures that do silly things. But I'm looking forward to playing this set. And I am well. I can't wait to start brewing. And just figure out what we can do with the old cards and new because just thinking about like one drop powerful dudes that aren't humans and then mutating onto them is just insane yeah yeah it's gonna be fun 
uh, keep a lookout for us on the on the channel for all the content for magic and we'll see how we do but thank you for staying with us here at geek Tokyo Island, and you have a good day goodbye later also guys we just remind y'all to hit that like button subscribe to our channel and if you want to keep up to date on all the future content make sure you click that bell it'll give you all the notifications you need with that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout-out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. We love you.